Beers and Steinberg. You know what the fuck it is? Aries and Andy, you and the jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut cocaine. No political corrections. Always sleep. Fuck being a woke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this shit. Before you were sucking on your mama's tit. Airy Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot. Racism. Sexism. Much love to my loyal bitch bag holders. Rollers, clip loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. Uh, I want you to do an O Steve for me uh, as Steve Harvey. Hey, y'all. This is Steve Harvey on behalf of the Spears and Steinberg email podcast. Oh, Steve. Yeah. Damn, that was good. Yes. Yeah, okay. I, that, we already broke so the we, flow of this we, whole podcast. We were talking about... But, but here, no, nigga, we niggas, we know how to get back in rhythm. Fuck out of here. <laughs> well, I'm you're just take the home. N-word. I'm a black man. All right, black man. <laughs> I just told you about my Farrakhan situation. I don't use that word. Yeah. I, I would like to talk about that. What? I, I, me, you know, Yamanika. I know who I want to talk, what I want to talk about with you. The, uh, I, the N-word thing I wanted okay, to talk okay, about. Okay, we can yeah, do that, go too. Ahead. Uh, because there's something you did, you were doing uh-huh. that I thought was brilliant that uh-huh. you don't seem to do anymore. What? When you would do those characters on your Instagram. Uh, oh, shit. Like, uh, hello, everyone. Godfrey here. Godfrey yeah. here. And yeah. the other one, which I really like, which I mentioned on this podcast, you did the dude, the cowboy. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's um, cold, the cold hard facts. Cold hard facts. Yeah, you I'm stop bring, I'm doing bringing, that. Let me tell you why. I'm bringing them back. But and this let is me give it, you a context. Okay. Uh, Gary Goffrey would do these characters, and one of which I, I love these two to death. Uh, it was it was a Godfrey here. Yeah. yeah. Pipe, Hello everyone. Pipe Godfrey. Godfrey yeah. yeah. And and he, he had a regal voice. Yeah. And he would break something down in the news from a racial perspective, but in that voice. Well, yeah. Because which I thought was brilliant. It's more palatable because it's easy to go. Yeah. You heard in the news, the white man up to no good again. No. That's like. Yeah, we it's it's because something as comedians, we're like chefs. We're literally like chefs. Chefs, really good chefs can make you eat food that you don't like to eat. A really good chef, because yeah. I don't like eggplant. I fucking hate that shit. But I went to a restaurant and I had a dip. There was some dip. I was like, yo, this shit is good. What the fuck is this? Oh, that's an eggplant that that's eggplant. The chef was like, he was like, oh five-star chef. And I was like, and I said, can I ask the chef what the fuck he did? And he told me how he did it. Da, 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 da. It's how you serve it. Like with the, with the, with the racial shit, I go, what can I do? I was in the costume shop. Cause I go to costume shops and just look around. I said, Ooh, I need a pipe. I need one of them pipes. I said, I, I have a character I have in my head. Sometimes I'll think of a character while I'm in the costume. Shop. Oh, I go, Oh, I got that. So I said, I'm just going to use this pipe. And do like, a, you remember Colonel McBrag? Mm. You remember Bullwinkle? Yes. And there was Colonel McBrag. He was a, a little a little guy who I was just brag. remember Bullwinkle. He goes, he goes, oh, I do say so. Yeah, yeah. What happened? I remember. I was trapped. There was five lions on one right. side, five lions on another side. What did you do, sir? Well, using my wit. He, he's always bragging, right, Colonel McBrag. Right. So I used that combination of, 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 of characters and I said, Hello, everyone. Godfrey here. As you can see here, there has been racial strife. People, especially Americans, that British accent, it gives us some kind of serene, like it's okay to hear information from them. We always believe British people. That's why British people narrate a lot of our shit. You know, when you're watching a science show and somebody's British, you go, it seems a little more educated. Right. He's like, as you see here, this mountain, we saw the, ra-. you're just like, you're more into it because it's British. But it's, our teeth look like a mosh pit. <laughs> it looks like I've been chewing a brick sandwich, but who cares? Let's get on with bats. But, but I will say your character inspired me because there's a character that I do. Yeah. Ah, uh, Brett Butler, yeah? yeah. And, and Brett is like a 1940s, 1920s radio voice. Right. So, and, but he's very racist. Right. So when 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 something comes up, you go, oh, Brett Butler, yeah? I see the Negroes and the niggas and the monkeys and the apes. So whatever he says, <laughs> dude. And what's, what's funny is you are, Aries goes, <laughs> dude. You are like you are like when you said what you said uh, about serving it. You are you're like smooth butter, man. You just you just go on, and you know, and, and that's a pipe. That's a lead and pipe. This, and this is <laughs> and this is when I knew that my character was dope because 
I was on a live, one of my 7 billion lives that I was doing. I, uh, some dude was going, cause I got a lot of trolls on my lives. People fuck with me all the time, you know? And one dude goes, yo man, um, Nas is following you, son. He just kept typing it. Yo Nas following you, son. Yo Nas following you, son. And it was just some dude's profile going, yo Nas following you, son. I'm like, <laughs> Yo, shut the fuck up doing that. He goes, nah, for real. Nas following you, son. It's it went about ten times. Yo, Nas following you, son. Nas is Nas follow- really following you? I was like this. What do you mean Nas is following my favorite rabbit? Get the fuck out. He goes, yo, Nas following you. So he just kept right. it. And I go, let me, because I'm not really good at social media, like notifications. I don't know. I don't know if somebody's following me. I just look at my follower numbers going, is it move? <laughs> I don't know who he's like, you know, I just followed you. I go, oh, where do I look? I don't, I'm really like tech savvy. I'm tech shitty, yeah. like for real. So I'm like, oh, let me check. So I asked my friend, how do I check to see who's following me currently? Oh, you got to do this. Press that. I go, oh, Nas is following me. <laughs> and I checked to see if it was real Nas, not little Nas X or some right. not, because some people call if he's themselves. following you, he's following you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't want it to be Nas underscore. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so I was like, let me see. Oh, blue check. Oh, shit. Nas is fucking following me. He goes, I told you Nas was following you, son. <laughs> <laughs> so I DM Nas. I go, my man, I appreciate that. Like, whatever. He goes, what's up, King? Huh? He answered me fast. Here's my number, son. Boom. Huh? I call that motherfucker. I talk for two hours with him. Right. He goes, what's up, King? He said, I just want to tell you, man, for real, that British dude with the pipe, he just starts laughing. That's the most brilliant shit I ever heard, man. That shit is brilliant. Nas told me that shit. Well, before I tell you my Nas story. <laughs> um, that shit was, that's when I knew but, but I was it, having It was resonating, yeah. It was but resonating. that character, as much as I love that character. Yes. Cold, hard facts. Yeah. Because that tag. Cold, cold hard, hard th- facts. Yeah. When you put that tag on the end of that like that, it's the fucking garnish the on the plate. All yeah. right, serve it. It's ready. I, it's, it's the finishing. I said, remember, this ain't black history. It's American history. And how do you say it at the end when you end it with the tag? I go, it's American history. And I just go, and I just put my head down and keep chewing. Yeah. I just go. And these are the cold hard facts. And these facts. are the cold hard facts. And, and you even, and this is such a comic detail, and but, I, and, but the fact is you're not chewing tobacco, no, but I have, you put I your have, tongue. I, 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 no, oh. I have, I have um, a Kleenex. Oh, I thought you put your tongue no, in your, like, uh-uh. and go like, uh-uh. cold I, have, hard I, I take like a piece of Marlon paper. Marlon Brando style. Yeah, and I just go, and I go, you know, I was just what? And I go, <laughs> I, I didn't even know that we were first cowboys. <laughs> right. Oh, man. But anyway, yeah, and I don't let you see my face. It's just the mouth. Right. Just a little angle. And then I'm playing, guess what I'm playing? I'm playing Hank Williams Sr. That's, that's, the, that's. I'm playing. Let me show you. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm playing Hank Williams Sr. because I'm keeping it at a paradox. You understand? Because they're like, he's explaining black history, but he's playing old white country music. You understand where I'm coming right. from? Yeah. The music, it's like a paradox. He goes, wait, I'm not playing fight the power. Ah, but that wouldn't fight. fit that. I know. Some people would do it like that. But the who? Not, Anybody with a comedic muscle would know that's wrong. That's uh, right, right. Hold on, hold on. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm going to show you what I'm playing. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I hope this is going to be like a four-hour podcast. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to get... Oh, wait. What's my shit doing? We have some... We got, we'll clean it up a little bit. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Shut up. Fuck. Sorry. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. I don't know. My shit's acting a... Oh, come it's on. It's funny. Oh, no. It's... Oh, man. Every time. Now we on a podcast. You don't want to work. Remember that frog that wouldn't sing? Oh, from from uh, yeah, WB. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, I don't know what the fuck this is doing right now. It's just like, no, no, okay, you know what? But Hank Williams is the country yeah. singer. Hank Williams is but his dad had a real different kind well, of. Hank Williams Jr. is the one. Are you ready for some football? Yeah. Right. But Hank That's... Williams old school. Hank Williams Senior's music's better than his son's. Yeah, it should be. It was like old, like bluegrass. Oh, hey, good looking. What you what got? You got cooking. That's right. his father. Right. So I, I'm playing like some um, Hank Williams music. Down, 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 
in the That's year. part of what makes it, yeah. And then it's like, okay, there's this black dude talking about black history and he's playing this old country music. So there's these this paradox going on. Because you're a there's chef. A juxtaposition, right. a juxtaposition of, of, of racial, okay, this is white music. What the fuck? But really, country music is black like music, origin. Yeah. That's what that's that's the historical thing too. Country music is black. It's just blues. It's blues based because Hank Williams, all those guys learned from old black men. That's what they learn. Country music is black. Is white blues. It's no different. And the banjo is an African instrument. the The origin of the banjo is African. So there's so much hypocrisy right. where country music has that stigma of white people, racist white people. You know, you wanted to walk into it. Remember Eddie Murphy walking into the country bar in 48 yeah, Hours? Right. It was one of my favorite movies. Right. He goes, I hate white people. And they're playing country music, you know. But it's it's funny because its origins are black. Yeah. But so the, I loved all the, you know. But all music origins are black. Of course. But that's what's so, I'm not going to say beautiful about racism. It's so fucking hypocritical. So all of that, all of that, those elements, I'm playing Hank Williams. I got this cowboy hat. Black people were cowboys before white people. We were cowboys. We first. were the original everything. Yeah, we were cowboys. You know about that? Yeah. First, like you know, uh, we just don't make good like, cowboy were, movies, uh, right? Posse. The uh, the but we would. It was dope back then. Was it? <laughs> was it? When you put it up against the classics, the spaghetti westerns, Clint Eastwood, Fellini, Fellini, Tombstone, movies. Mexicans were part of the original cowboy uh, structure yeah, as well. Mexico, no doubt. You even, even I'm not going to say Pancho Villa, but a lot of guys. Yeah, of course the yeah. Mexicans were too. But like recorded history is the black dudes were first. Yeah, the American. What we consider the American cowboy. American cowboy were yeah. black because phase on love is related to Nat Love. Deadwood Dick, he's related to Nat Love, who was a cowboy, who was one of the original cowboys in 1800. Phase on Love, that's his, tra he traced that back. Um, well, that's why there's still black rodeo. Right. And we're better than everybody at it. We got our horses dancing and shit. Come and on, man. We got, we're, and. Niggas always uh, take it to um, another level. Um, steer wrestling was invented by Bill Pickett. Bill Pickett was the first guy to grab a steer without using a rope. They got a big ass statue of him in Dallas. Bill Pickett. We have- um, There was a cartoon on Bill Pickett. Okay, Bill, yeah. So Bill Pickett, you got Nat Love, you got Bass Reeves, who they based the Lone Ranger off of, and they made Lone Ranger white when it was a black dude who was a sheriff, a bad motherfucking sheriff, Bass Reeves. Yeah, we had all kinds, we had black women sh um, sharpshooters, but they erased all of that. You know what I'm saying? Well, so go ahead. Because the cowboy came from the word cowboys. You tended the cows. Those are the boys that tended the cows. That's where the word came from. Then- they saw black people making it cool. And so white dudes were like, nah, we're the cowboys now. It's like racehorse jockeys. The first racehorse jockeys were black. Well, they, yeah. they, that, but that was the tough work. That was the fucked up work. Race, because the but, race. But that's like when yeah. everybody thinks they associate rock and roll with being white. With being white, which is, which is like, nah. But I, don't, I, I don't, nah. Who associates rock and roll with being white? Most, a lot of white people. White do, people Andy. do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I must come from a different place because then- Nigga, you've always come from a different but, place. But that, that's not possible. <laughs> See, this is one of those, mo these are one of these moments where yeah. if you weren't here, yeah. We would vigorously argue because, about because this. I don't understand because everybody. Am I wrong? Every, well, did I say something wrong? Say, because, this is because beautiful. Well, hey, did let I let say something talk, wrong? Let's okay, talk. Hold on. Go, let go. Because rock and roll was was banned because it was black music. White people hated rock and roll that period time period because it was black music. But here's, everybody okay, but you, saw but it as thing, black but music. These, you're, you're coming from rock and roll started taking over jazz because rock and roll was beaten out because jazz was the thing. It was ragtime. It was it was ragtime. It was uh, Scott Joplin with ragtime. It was jazz. It was Louis Armstrong. It was Charlie it was Parker. The, the black music, music again. Again, yeah. They but remember the jazz. There was a part of jazz that whites didn't like either, especially with bebop. The way they played, yeah, and shit like they were like, oh, turn that music down. Even and the ragtime, white folks went against that type of jazz. But then they got used to it, and jazz was the thing. Then all the white. Like 
Um, Benny Goodman and all these, you know, all these motherfuckers. Uh, David. Uh, Watered down, but still. Rubeck and all of these cats started. White Do you jazz. think the majority of white people truly want to give credit or give credit to jet, to rock and roll being black music? No, they don't. I don't understand how you couldn't because that. You don't understand that, but we're telling you that's how no, it is. I'm, I'm yeah. hearing you, but I'm a yeah. white guy who's around white people. We all know the James Brown. We all know the Little Richard. We all know it's, it's, these guys. It's, but when you say I'm a white guy, so what white people do? The immediate white people are you talking about in your circle? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but you think that's the majority of white America? I don't know your those circle? fuckers. I don't know listen, those. Listen, I don't listen, know them. Listen, I don't think white folks want to give us credit because there's white people that understand it, but giving someone credit is different to actually give someone credit with respect. They'll give it to it, but it's, there's this, there's this, there's this reluctance. There we go. That's credit. a great word. Reluctance. It's, it's, it's a I'll, reluctance. I'll, 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 I'll because, take that. Because, or a flat out denial. Yeah, it's a denial because here's the thing. We've been, because this is all, fa listen, and when I say whites, I don't mean every single one. So let's we, we, be know that. We, we, right, we know that. We know that. Whites have always put us down. They say we weren't intelligent. They literally had scientists saying that black people were not as smart. Our skulls were made in a way where our intelligence was no good. We were, we were treated as beasts and animals and money. So remember that we were not part of the intelligentsia. We're not part of academia. When we were the first people to create universities, we were the first mathematicians, the first to map out science. We were the first doctor. We were the first everything. But the Europeans came and go, these are savages. They're this, they're that. You understand? Well, it's the only way the Europeans imagine, get away imagine, with what they did. Imagine, imagine that kind of stereotype and that kind of thinking. And then you have to give credit. We, it, and it's music that whites that are participating in Created by people that you can't stand. You used Imagine, the great, you used the right word a second ago. It's reluctant. It's all reluctant. It's all hypocrite. Because hip hip they'll be like this. We give credit to you. Okay, let's move on. They can't just soak in it and go no. But it's the people. hypocrisy for me. It's it's the it's the it's the it's the it's the, it's the annoyance of having to give us credit. That's like when I was when I was on after Vlad. you've been shitting on us so long. We're the creators of all this dope shit. It's just like if Jesus Christ shows up, people are going to be pissed. Well, the first time they're going to be mad if Jesus shows up. The first time I was on, they're going to be upset, uh, which was huge and, and got big numbers. Because when I said the thing about, you know, again, this idea that black people are to be feared, that the black man is scary. Ooh, when historically white people, y'all have created the most murderous, bloodthirsty, genocide, homicide. Yeah. A, but a, if I, but, any race. but it's smart though. It's kind of smart marketing to make us the scary one. Imagine, I mean, that's a good con game, you know, because I'm like, okay, I know I murdered everybody. It's like mafia shit. It's no different. You go, hey, don't make it look so bad. You know, when you hit him, put a phone book over there so you can, uh, he can be no injured. Bruises. And, and right. No bruises. Right. Yeah, I'm fucked up, but I got to make you look more fucked up. How do I do that? Yo, let's start talking about these motherfuckers. Make them to be the animals so they can take off the, uh, you know, we don't want, we want to be the good people. That's why they, they run everything. They, listen, white folks were smart as fuck. They took over everything, took over the media, took over everything and made everybody else look like shit when they're doing the same exact shit. That's, that's pretty smart. The government, right? The government does a lot of sly ass shit, but they always make themselves look good the way they, you know what I'm saying? I'm just... I, you know what I mean? It's all about marketing and who's got the power. And they had the power to make black people look like shit. They made Africa it's look a, like shit through but, media. They made all kinds of people look like shit. But it's an easy target. Yeah. It's an easy target because I can see that you're black from down the street. Right. And okay. so it's easy. It's an easy, it's well, an yeah, easy you, target. You, your reaction is visual. That's why a lot, you know, it's visual. But shit. that's that's the problem with us against them kind of a mentality mm -hmm. because it's it's an obvious difference. I, you're no the way I see it, we're no different. The only difference is the visual difference. And once you put the visual difference on it, that's how you divide it. And right, that's right. the problem. Well, that's what started in the 1500s is when they started to categorize black folks. Like you're black, I'm white. Europeans started that shit in the 1500s. But um, as far as like giving us credit, like look at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You've been there, right? Yeah. I've been there thousands of times. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a an institution where <laughs> you got to be voted in by a bunch of white motherfuckers for music we created. Are you fucking kidding me? You go in there and Elvis has the biggest display, bigger than James Brown, bigger than Chuck Berry. There's a lot of discrepancies I have when I walk into this museum. I go, I'm not knocking the roll. I love the Rolling Stones. I love, but where? No, 
Marvin Gaye shit should be from one end to the other. James Brown should be from one end to the other. What the fuck is this shit? Did you I see? I can barely find Jimi Hendrix's shit. Get the fuck out. Where of was here. Bo Diddley's representation? Where's Bo Diddley? Where's Where's fucking BB King shit? It's, but, it's but there, you know but it's in that one section but, but you, of early rock. But you got Eric Clapton calling it's, people. Isn't you got it funny Eric Clapton call, Isn't it, it funny Eric how Clapton. niggas always get a section? No, no. Right. But, 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 that's but, a, that's but, the but, metaphor but, for but, life. But let's hold on to this. Let's hold on to this for a second. Right. So we're talking Rock and Roll Hall of yes. Fame. It's, it's run by it, white people, people telling us who the fuck is the best okay. when we created this shit. Okay, but that's like, fine. And I, and I agree with that. So well, that's yeah. what you see. And there are, like I said, white artists that are great, that are just fucking dope. But, and I get that. But uh, rock is also part of pop culture. No pop culture is big. And this is the mm -hmm. direction that it's gone. And it yeah. has gone with a lot of white entertainers. Yes, there's a lot of black entertainers. But okay, let's take basketball. Basketball, now, who are the greatest players? Well, it's so, us. Because but when you take something and you make it more marketable, more sellable, more everything, yeah. then you get the credit for it. We get it. the credit, but who's running the team? Uh, no, I'm not I'm racist we, yeah. fucking <laughs> club owners There's, call us niggas while they making you money. I see you see what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, but I, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing like, with that, but I'm just right. saying I'm talking right. only from popular culture. No let's, doubt. Let's, 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 we're not removing. I, you can't really remove the money from it. No, but, of course but, not. But let's look at the popularity. Yeah. And I'm saying yeah. that something was constructed by uh, some white guys with chess passes and bounce passes. Right. And we take, you take the game to another level as black. And then I also think, too, the fact that black people weren't allowed. And then once we got in, we go, we got to be really good. It was, you know what I mean? I wonder. I wonder. Tell if, me if I'm off here. Just okay. tell me. If I'm, okay. Based on what you said, and we kind of alluded to, alluded to uh -huh. that. On our earlier podcast, I said, we're like white people's Frankenstein. Y'all created us. And I don't mean- It's a lie. I don't it's mean a lie. I mean, it's like because y'all forced us to have to they, be better right. to get in and succeed. It's right. like we're y'all's monster. Yeah. We're your creation. Yeah. And and, and, I, and I think a couple or of people that it's wrote- It's either it, we're just better than you or is it because of the oppression I, that we're better than you? I would say, it's honestly, two different, two I, honestly- yeah. A little bit of both. Yeah. No it, is, it is a, a little, little bit of both yeah. because you don't get this culture that is the most dominant culture on the planet. Earth. Yeah. Is the black culture. culture. Black culture. The only is the original most... culture that's been, a, that, that has been seen today. I, the fact that the fact we still have our white fans. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that black people created everybody like we were the first to take a piss. I mean, and we did it different. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the piss came out and did like a snake move. <laughs> we were the first to do everything. The first to talk. First to have breath. I was talking about martial arts one time with these dudes. They were like, "Yeah, but it came from Asia." I go, "No, it did not." Oh, this is an martial education arts, for me. Martial arts comes from Africa. Really? Yes. Kung fact. Fu came from Asia. No, Kung Fu came from a, a Indian sage, uh, Bodhidharma. And he brought it to China. China, okay, okay. He brought but, it to but China. The, but the technique of the te Kung Fu. Listen, first of all, the Asians literally like what well, you say, modernized it. Of okay. course, yes. that's that's yes. that's the right word, modernized. Yeah, they modern, sure. But I, I, and my joke is this: I said I can prove to you that Africans created martial arts. We were the first on the planet. You mean to tell me we didn't do this first? Nobody punched. <laughs> we didn't throw a kick. We waited hmm. thousands of years for you to come. Somebody blocked and went, bomb, fuck that. And there is proof of African martial arts. There's Igbo Damn. wrestling. There's different types of martial arts that come from it. The spear, by the way, is the, is, the, um, is the staff. You know the bow staff? Yeah, yeah. I took martial arts for 10 years. I took Hapkido for 10 years. I, I, I took, yeah. Okay, the bow staff, where you see Jet Li using, that's the, the spear. Yeah. Africans had that first. And by the way, Asians come from South Africa, the South African tribe, the San people. They, that's where Asians are directly linked. Have you seen the San people? Look at Mandela. Look at his face. He looks like a black Chinese man. Look at the people from South Africa. That's where Chinese people come from. Look at old maps, though, because when you take old maps, they were divided by the people, not by the no land. No doubt. And so you, when you, it was a Pangea. Yeah. Listen. There's a, there's a documentary called The Journey of Man. You have to see it. It's on YouTube now. It's this white geneticist who goes around trying to find the origin of man. And that motherfucker went around all the world. It's fucking great. And he goes, no matter how much scientists try to hide it, we all come from Africa. It's proven in the blood, proven in the DNA, and 
He said that, that the Asians come from the San people who are the oldest people on the planet. Those people in the bush, those African people that have the, that look like Chinese people, that's where Chinese people come from. So uh, we, have cr- we invented martial arts and we invented the Chinese people that fucking modernized it, period. But period, that's it, but, uh, that's how it okay, goes. Okay, but here's, here's what I- But I don't mind giving Asians credit for the shit. I love, you know, but- But intelligent yeah. people, how do you, This is where I, I, I think that I have a problem with when we get into these arguments. If you're intelligent- <laughs> yeah, like, Most people aren't intelligent, Andy. But, uh, there's a, there's a, I would Why say is that pers- so hard for you to fathom? Because most I, people are fucking idiots. Because I can't <laughs> believe people are this dumb. They well, are! Well, how are you going to sell like candy? You, 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 know, you need dummies. That's how you sell, you sell candies. That's is why a, you build a that's Walmart. That's why it's called a treat, though. A candy is a treat. I mean, it's you know, not... it's a treat, but I'm saying there's a lot of fucked up shit that you sell because a lot of people are sheep and they're I, stupid. But that's I how believe, you make money. I believe there's people, I believe more people know the truth and I don't think that they're the people that speak it. Uh, I don't know you about You think that. so? You really believe there's that? There's people who just go along with what they've been taught because that is easier for them. Yes! White people are okay with George Washington being a, a fucking never told a lie when he owned slaves. Well, they know that, that they scene. Know. That scene. Well, he, they're starting to know now. They know that there's no but cherry tree. Be, uh, but listen, but it's not shit. fucking your power structure up. Who gives a fuck? Listen, that scene it's, in Do the Right Thing yeah. where uh, Spike Lee is with John Turturro's Talking character. Talking about the black people he and likes. He said, uh, uh, Who are you, who's your, your favorite your singer? Farrakhan said the original man will one day rule the earth as they once did. When, when the fuck did that happen? Right. That's most people. That's most white people. But I, I think they don't believe it. I don't think it. I, maybe it is most. I don't think it is most. But uh-huh. I don't think that you. Sell, we don't. It's to the advantage of a few people to keep people fighting with each other. And no, that, yeah, of course. That's, and so, this, but that's the people that really run it, this fucking charade. But even if there wasn't racism, there would be some kind of hierarchy. There's always been hierarchy. But it happens in primates, bees, Every, rats. Yeah. Everybody. There's hierarchy. You know, in rats, there's a hierarchy. I read this book called Rats in New York. This dude, some Wall Street dude, because every time he'd walk past the street, he'd see all these rats and he just got interested in it and he wanted to find out the history of rats. And the rats that are in New York are called, they're Norway rat. They're from Norway. And they came from slave ships. Europeans brought rats to the Americas. They brought diseases. It's all facts. There's a book called Guns, Germs, and Steel on how Europeans use diseases, weaponry to take over the world. A white dude wrote it. So you'll definitely read it. It's not Hakeem Shabazz, <laughs> Hail No <Nall> Jr. <laughs> Hail No <Nall> Jr. <laughs> Hakeem Shabazz, Hail No <Nall> Jr. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's facts, and and the, the, when the, people not don't want to people don't want to read, they're going to think rats came from just oh it's just a dirty city. They came from somewhere. The rats came that this particular rat came from ships of Europeans bringing slaves and all, they came and infiltrated. This is, I read it and a white dude wrote that book. I'm just, it's, nobody wants to learn that that, that but, history. But why, and why would, they, time, why would they want to know that? Because you but should a lot, be educated. But you should be should educated. Be but here's the problem though. When you educate Europeans the right way, there's a lot of fuckery with European history. That's the, because whites hated whites. Europeans well, killed Europeans all day long. Protestants, Catholics, Forever. Scotland, they murdered. Then when they see people that don't look like them, it got worse. So that's the problem. A lot of European history is good, but a lot of it is fucked up. That's but, why whites don't want to hear that shit. But to sell it as whites and bl- uh, whites right and blacks, it doesn't make sense because whites have never got along with whites. Blacks before this happened never got but along black, with that. But that was used, cat- that categorization was used to for control. Yeah. You know, but label, tribalism, labeling. Tribalism, tribalism has been here no, since tra- the beginning It has of time. been here. Tribalism has been here. That's all facts. <laughs> but as people that look like us, We've been given the short end of the stick you have for so the sh- fucking long, and we've been in that. I don't know how long it's going to last. Probably last forever. I don't know. I, I don't think it lasts forever. Based on your personal opinion uh-huh. and what you've been saying, yeah. and the history and the facts, mm-hmm. plain and simple, do you think that some of this comes from white people just going, "We don't like them because they're just better than us"? Sure. Is it a jealousy cool. thing? Yeah, of course it's envy. Of yeah, course whoa, whoa, it's envy. Whoa, whoa. Let, 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 let's slow down on this better okay, than us yeah, thing. I, I, it's it's envy. We're cooler than them. That that I'll give you. Period. But I'm but but when you do better than let, let me just I could just you, go no. by the microphone. We did this. You all didn't know to do this. We did this. 
Now all white singers are doing this shit so they can win the voice. When when we you, you talked about white, when they sing they're like this and I'm telling you really are you doing that get the and fuck again, out again we want to welcome you to the Nat Turner show <laughs> this is and I'm telling you this is, this is Hakeem Shabazz ah! this is Hakeem Shabazz sometimes <laughs> I see myself <laughs> in a hell and then Blake shows is like woo. The, Woo! This is this is Hakeem Shabazz. <laughs> and then, then some Filipino kids and I'm like, held and on. I'm telling you, everybody's singing black. You're so they killing can my win. joke right now. Uh, this is Hakeem Shabazz, and I'm Hell Nah Junior. Wait, and I'm telling you, sometimes motherfuckers, we do everything cooler than everybody. We always, there's always a nuance we do. We go, I'm not going to hold the microphone like it's luck be the lady tonight. Never get out Okay, but Here's the perfect part. So we were like this, yo, what the, No, you already just said Italians have that that same kind of swag, but right? Italians well, Italians derive from black people. Well, yeah. Yeah, but, but who, who, who's Sicilian this? But, no, but what, blood, you, but what are you doing right now? What song are you doing right now? That's an Italian dude. That's it's an Italian, Italian dude. dude doing jazz. And his back, back. What is what was Frank Sinatra's back around band? Count Basie. What are you talking about? I, I get that, but what I'm saying it, everything is everything is black. But this is this is what we say doing. That's why Sinatra. I fuck with Sinatra because it's like too. luck. Be that's a black count. Yeah, come on now. That's that's Count Basie. What are we doing here? But this oh, is- get off me, you <laughs> fucker! Get the fuck out of here! But, hey, but uh, my oh, point is, he oh, wasn't doing the whole oh, list. Whatever. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. That's a Jewish guy. That's a Jewish guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretending like he's in town. <laughs> oh, and was he pretending to grow up with those guys? Well, New Yorkers. They, they all they, they merge. All merge. We all do. We, the we all the merge. Irish take on all the. We uh, all take on each other's attributes in New York, especially when you live so close, close to, to each everybody, other, on right. top of each other. It's proximity. So I'm saying that uh, Frank Sinatra is a jazz guy. It's jazz. I'm telling you, that's but, he, but black. he's not a cool. He's not he's, like what you're. No, he was no, very, very cool, very motherfucker. talented, very, very talented. But he wasn't doing the but, cool. He, no, but cool, no, cool and Frank Sinatra well, go together. But he was smooth. Yeah. There's a difference. He was cool, smooth. The same shit. But. And they, you know, they all talk like that. Hey, baby, how you doing? All right. right. Yeah. 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 That was that era. It was cool. And he's but, from New York. Yeah. As a New Yorker. But a lot of their shit, they learn from black folk. Of, I But know. of course. Right. Of course. But again, I go back to, of course, yeah. because but how I do you like, not know, know this? But, 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 but Andy, you, you go, of course. Like, that should be common. It is common. It's no, not. it's not. Then where did I come from? I come from Tucson, you're, Arizona. That's the most backwards place wow, in the you're world. from Arizona. Yeah, did, how, why would I know this? Why, why you, did I grow up? How many teams have a Larry Bird? You, <laughs> okay, you're Larry Bird, nigga. You got it. You have it because you have the wherewithal to want to learn. Not everybody. That is, is key. What he just said. Not to everybody. Want to. You want to learn. How many times have I said on this a lot podcast? Of people don't want white to people learn. take the time. You don't have the reluctance. Take that the a lot time. Of There's whites that do know their shit. Yeah, that but, know their shit. They're willing to but, learn because they're about learning. Did, but, it, it, remember what I asked you earlier when uh-huh. I said, "How many white people on your Instagram go, dude? You, you're racist. You don't like white people. Yeah, Those I, are the ones who don't take the time they to learn. The well, they don't even know what racism is. They don't even know the definition. But Andy, what I'm saying is. A lot of white people like that. A lot. A lot yeah, of white majority. people that speak out like that. I think there's people that aren't. Sp- I, I wish and they're just no, as no, racist, no, but no, they no, don't no. speak Hold out. On. No, that's not it. A lot of whites that don't speak out there because they always say the worst, the worst thing that a nigger is a nigger lover. That's what the, the what the South would say. The worst thing there is than a nigger is a nigger lover. So whites were afraid to like stick up for black people because they would get murdered. Remember the, the Jewish yeah, yeah, cat yeah, yeah. and the, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. Pro, uh, the civil the, rights? The, yeah, for the they, the they'll voter kill you just as, as They will kill you just as hard L- listen, the if sub- you stand up for black people. That's why a lot of whites, there's some whites I give pass to because they're just afraid. It's fucked up. They'll let shit happen because they're like, if I speak up, I am a dead man. You know, they, some, they don't have the courage. There's some whites that do want to learn that do. There's some few that will speak out like Jane Elliott, Tim Wise. You know, Tim Wise. Yeah. Look at Tim Wise, Jane Elliott. She's been, you know, for, Jane yeah. Elliott, she's been doing it but for she, years. She's getting nailed right. She got nailed recently because of uh, reparations and she didn't want to go all the way. And some people would say, then, then what did she say? 
She said that uh, reparations to the uh, American ADOS, uh, yeah, yeah, was she understood that descendants of slaves, which is proper. But no, no. But she said that how do you how do you do that? How do you how do you find how do you put that together? And how do you do that for something that happened in a time where you couldn't actually know the way she she's, put just, it she's just probably trying to say, well, how do you how do you figure it that's out? That's what she was trying that's to say. All. She was saying reparations for the uh, Native uh, American. Uh, what is it? And it's the, the indigenous, indigenous people. people. I didn't want to say Native American. Right. Sorry, because I, I was trying to uh, I was thinking of uh, Canada hates that more than anybody else. Oh, Native. Canada. What, what the, they call indigenous uh, people in, Yeah. OK, yeah. Yo, so yo. the indigenous Americans, she saw that as a uh, as as room, but she doesn't understand how you would go forward. She would take care of the people that she could that she immediately could take care of the slaves. She said, it's kind of tough. Cause there's a lot of like missing but documents, see, but, here's, but here's where but I, I think you can calculate it. I, I fix it differently. And this yeah. is where people don't, you know, mm -hmm. and when I say this, I, I'll get anger for it. I don't know what I could do about the actual slavery part, mm -hmm. but I would say anything after emancipation all the way to the civil rights, any, anything that came from Jim Crow, there's, there's reparations for that because you weren't allowed to participate in the American system. You weren't allowed to read. You weren't allowed to write. You got to go for the, the raping of black and black women and black men, the separating of children, the killing of that. Then you got to go Jim Crow, Reconstruction. See, but I would, got, I would start, but I would start at Jim Crow and because that's well, no, easy. No, no. That's easy. Well, sla slavery, you got it. You got uh, but, but that, but as right. I'm saying, you, as, when you do this, as you uh -huh. reverse, when you rewind. Because I think you can literally trace all the white owners of slaves because they you got can. record. You can. You get all that shit and there, and then you go, but, Jim but Crow, how do you serve slavery, this segregation, to police brutality, mass incarceration. Man, we can keep fucking going. You know what I mean? The, uh, you got so redlining, holy! But that's all Jim Crow, all Jim Crow time, because you, gotta, you weren't you gotta, allowed to participate, and there was a war that you were, said you were allowed to participate. And, but also, the army got the, what? Did the armed forces got desegregated, desegregated in 1948. You got that. You got the treat mistreatment of black soldiers that fought in every fucking war. You got the ones that el actually helped Jewish people get out of the, the concentration camps. And they treated the black soldiers like shit even after they did that. So we got that. You got Iwo Jima. You got, it's like, it's like when Mr. Farrakhan said, if, we, if America owed us something, let's figure it out. Add it up. He does this whole thing, add it up. So he breaks down all of the shit that black people have sacrificed, all the dead bodies. <clears throat> also, all the blacks, um, black Wall Street that were all the black cities that were burned down. Also, there are cities underwater. There are about seven or eight black towns that are under a lake now. They made a lake over these black cities. You got that. You got, man, you got also black Central women. Park. You got, yeah, you got Central Park, which was Seneca Village at one time, where black people live. You got Africa Village in Canada, in Halifax, where they got rid of black people there, where the invention of hockey was by black Canadians. There's a book called Black Ice. We created hockey in 1895, 22 years before the NHL. So black, there's a book and it came out on ESPN. I have the book. You need to do that. All the inventions we created, all the patents that were stolen from us. Black people practically created a damn near everything that people are using. Iron, ironing board, washing dryer, escalator, elevator. So you mean to tell me we're not the superiors? No, you aren't. You're shizer. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> And you saw it's all this black power. Mm. And so you're saying that the white man never had any contributions to this. Let's to get rid of the blacks. <laughs> but if but you want to... This is what we say. Mm. We call them this Okay. Okay. Mm. <laughs> okay. Mm. My name is Gottfried, and I want to tell you, it's, I'm sorry, Steinberg. <laughs> anyway. Let's start with him. <laughs> the annihilation with him. How preheat heaven. We, we, we're joking, guys. <laughs> <laughs> just want to throw this disclaimer. He's here. He's a comic. We're all comedians. We're all it's all love. Don't don't, don't put the disclaimer on it. People should. I'm putting people, it. Fuck people that. shouldn't get a disclaimer. If you tune into this, is that you what should, you're saying, Jewish man? People shouldn't get a disclaimer. <laughs> make sure you look. At yeah, the camera people thing. shouldn't get a disclaimer. You should fucking <laughs> do figure it, it out. No profile. You should please. have some sensibility. <laughs> we should. I, I. It's people complaining is the new sport now. Complaining and being offended is a hobby now. 
It's like, I it's irrational. Afraid. And it's narcissism too, because narcissism is at a level of me. I look at how I feel about oh, it. Oh, dude, you need to just I pay. Feel like the the I, fact when you brought up the word narcissism, please. And white women give, are the fucking give us, leaders please give of this us a shit. Little, please give us a little bit of Donald Trump. <laughs> Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump, over here. Will you be making a run in 2024? As I look at the, the platforms, there's a lot of really good things that are happening. My team and we're really surveying what it looks like, the landscape. And you see Joe Biden has not completed everything he said. Very, very poor. Um, very, very slow in process. The things that I was doing, I was cut off very early. And um, we can see that I believe that my run is going to add, it's going to be basically part two of making America great again because it was interrupted by Joe Biden. M Mr. Trump, uh, uh, Mark Daly here for the New York Times. You're well, a well, very, very silly man. I do not want to talk to you. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Mr. Mr. President. Uh, you, Mr. you said Daily Planet. You shouldn't be on this planet. <laughs> you should be on a different what planet. Do you, what, you're, a, you're an asshole. What do you think of... So I'm not going to talk what to you. What do you Please, think of... <laughs> I'll go to someone else. What do you think you're of, an embarrassment because I've seen you before and I told you not to be on this planet. You're from a different... Maybe go to Mars and do what you do. What do you there. think of God? I feel <laughs> I don't have time. Blah, 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 blah. Nah, do, 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 do. Okay. What do you feel about Godfrey's comments about black people being the original man? I think they're very good. There's very, we should do more study. We should do more. <laughs> there should be more study on it. I'm not sure, but they're very good. Very fleet of foot. Um, they're very, they have lots of capabilities that I think a white man can never have, but I hope that whoever they are, that they will vote the original man, the non-original, just vote for me. That would very help me, help me very well. But you could get the they black vote. They were the vote. original Republicans. <laughs> if you could get the black vote, if you could just do something for black people, what can you do? I think that the basketball courts are in very bad shape. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of broken nets. I think those cities deserve a better, the paving, they sprain ankles are being sprained. I think that the basketball nets in the cities, especially the inner cities, the, the should chain, be, the chain should nets? be resurfaced. That's a very good start. You would, the chain nets? The chain nets are very, very noisy, especially <laughs> in these gentrified neighborhoods. You hit the, you hit a jump shot, you're waking up the white neighbors. Very unfair. Maybe a soft sort of synthetic net would keep it quiet and people can continue with their basketball skills because we do need a better league. We do need better players and I'm very, very positive of the NBA's future. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my God. Oh no. Back of my head hurts. Man. <laughs> Is that it? Is that, that's two hours, the answer two Wait, is that, is that it for us? I think so, we, man. we didn't do the comedy club thing. Oh, well, okay. Well, Godfrey's because well, we're both in. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're both, both in Baltimore right now. Oh, well, let now. me ask you something. Simultaneous. This, this is my first time here. Yeah. Uh, not in Baltimore, but not in Baltimore. Not in Baltimore, but at this particular club, I'm at yeah. Magoobies. Magoobies. Uh, listen, Andrew. I, I, Andrew uh, Unger. His brother Mark Unger is a comic. Okay, I don't know who that in is. In L.A. for years. Who are the Mark Huggers? Uh, Andrew's the guy that runs it, the manager. Oh, okay. The ball-headed dude. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. listen, I, I love, I like Baltimore uh, Comedy Factory, but <laughs> I think Magoobies is going to be it for me. <laughs> I love Magoobies, nigga. Yeah, yeah. Magoobies is- Magoobie doobie doo. I, 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 said, I said to the crowd last <laughs> night, I was like, this is different. I said, a lot of white people here. I said, there's so many niggas at Baltimore Comedy Factory. I thought I was in Detroit, <laughs> nigga. There's a lot of white people at Magoobies. Yeah. I love mixed crowds, man. I don't mind. I black never, crowds, I never, but I never. It's just I never, more fun to I me. I never not liked it. I grew up in um in diverse neighborhoods. My parents, even though Chicago is the most segregated. Let me city, be clear, because I'll get flack for this. No. Uh I'm not saying I have a problem with all black crowds. Not at all. I love my brothers and sisters. Not at all. But it's just more fun when there's more than one color in the jelly Listen, bean. You don't dish. even have to, you don't even have to explain it to them because my thing is the more races in the room. The better the comedy. That's yes. more e flavor. Even from my perspective, like, that's all. I like a room. I don't like an all white room either. Just to go the no, other way, because I, I, I don't like, like an all white town. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, I, I, yeah, I, I, 
Let alone, I don't like an all white town. I need backup. I, I, but I <laughs> shit. I need I just in case something goes down. It's right. like we got you, dog. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. But yeah. It is, the, the diversity is what makes it's comedy beautiful. great. It makes yeah. comedy great. But first of all, when you do diverse crowds, it you it it trains you to not be afraid. Let's say you're you go out of a show and it's like, wow, there's a lot of Asians in here. I go, great, shit. My crowds are everybody. I'm good. Right. It, it's 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 scenario recognition, I call it, for comedians. That's why it's always important to do everything. Do the empty room. Do that. Do a bar set. Do everything. So when you come into that, your, that environment, yeah. you're like, oh, I know this. Okay, there's going to be a little noisy here. Boom, boom, you know, it's scenario recognition. You know what I mean? That's why veteran ball players they're better in the playoffs they've been here before we've seen this before i know what it's like when it's 10 minutes on the clock when it's five seconds we know what to do it's the same thing that's why racially a lot of there's a lot of african-american comics that do not know how to do diverse rooms Hello. sometimes they some of them don't know how to do it because they're not used to that they especially when you're in the black i came from the the african-american circuit and the mainstream in chicago yes, sir. i came under bernie mac I was, it was, I was doing. Oh, 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 oh. Tell you like a motherfucker, you know. Oh, 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 oh. Tired of that shit. Show me some love. Oh, oh, oh. Show me some motherfucking love. Oh, 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 oh. You know, I'm sick and tired of being motherfucking sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of my motherfucker. You're my bitch. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm sick of that motherfucker. You know, I'm trying to do my thing. You know, I'm with my wife. You know, my mother, daughter. And shit, you know, just, I'm hanging out, just trying to eat. You know, just trying to motherfucking eat. And there's this motherfucker come on. Hey, buddy, show me some love, motherfucker. <laughs> you see me with my family. You see a motherfucker with his family. <laughs> but that's Bernie. I was doing the Cotton Club, the Click. I was doing all those rooms with, with, with Dion Cole and, and Corey and D. Ray Davis, all of us. We were doing those rooms. I was doing, because I wanted to do, because I like people that look like me doing it. But then I like doing mainstream. I said, let me see. And Bernie used to tell me, I like that. He said, Godfrey, you versatile. You a versatile motherfucker. You do all white motherfucking room. You come here, you killing motherfucking pimps, hustlers and shit. You just as funny. I said, well, Bernie, I'm comfortable with myself. I'm not going to lie on who the fuck I am. But you know what? Good audiences, good audience. intelligent audiences yeah. can also tell the difference between guys who may be funny as black comics, but that's all they are. Right. Versus this motherfucker a little different. Yeah. This motherfucker's got some... A certain kind because of wit, comedy for, a certain kind right, of versatility. Right. They right. can tell that. There's, and I love that. And there's comedians that like to do the urban circuit. So be it. That's your business. There's nothing wrong with that. The Chitlin circuit was created back in the early 1900s because white folks, I'm sorry to say it, didn't allow us to perform with Well, you of all. course not. Brad Butler, yeah? yeah. Yes. You know, back in those days, they only saw us as the servants and the Here cooks and the doormats. <laughs> they didn't want a nigga that close to them. And if you had something intelligent to say, lock that nigger away. He's dangerous. Ah, Brad Butler, yeah? You see what I'm saying? And so my so man Steve were... will add music to that. Okay, good. And it'll be that 20s music, that yeah, dance that, that, music. That, 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 yeah, that, that 23 skidoo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Go ahead. 23 skidoo. Yeah. Uh, that's, um, so, yeah. The, the, okay, there's a book called, okay, here we go. Ready? It's called On the Real Side, The History of African American, it's called, okay, On the Real Side, Laughing, Lying, and Signifying the History of African American Comedy from Slavery to Richard Pryor. Then they revise it to slavery to Chris Rock. It's a fantastic book. I, I read it. I get that. I read it in college. It's 20 some years ago, but I've been talking about it so much that the sales have been moving. It's the history of, of black comedy. It starts from Burt Williams, who was the first black comedian to ever be televised. He wanted to be like Charlie Chaplin. He didn't talk. It was old footage. Burt Williams, I read his book. He was the first black comedy star on TV with blackface. He was a light-skinned Caribbean guy who had to wear blackface. Then he was in a team, all right? He was in a team called Williams and Lyles. He was in a black team. And you know, back in the day, black folks had to wear cork on their faces. That was the law. You had to wear cork on your faces and you had to talk in a duo. You had to talk in dialogue, no monologues. It was not allowed to do a monologue in front of a white audience. It was illegal. This is early 1900s Jesus New York City. Christ, man. You could not do wow. 
Wow. A fucking like we talking. When you know how we go, what's up, everybody? You couldn't do that. It was illegal. I, black. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, okay. And it was then the Toba circuit was created. It was the black Chitlin circuit with Moms Mabley. It was it was Fred Fox. It was it was all of those guys. It was Pig Meat Markham. It was Man Tam Moreland. It was Man Tam Moreland, Willie Stephen Best. Fetchett. They had to, that was the only way they could eat. They would travel around and it had to be in colored hotels. They would, they had, they were in sundown towns. When you tell, when you read this and you see how they suffered, I started crying reading this book. To see how they suffered just so we could be here. The shit they went through, they used to have laughing barrels in white towns. If black people laughed, they had to laugh in the barrels. That's where barrel of laughs comes from. How do you they, laugh in a barrel? What do you mean? Like put their head in? The yes, barrel? you laugh, nigga. You can't laugh that loud. You got. We have barrels for that. God damn! If you really break down what whites have done, they. That, you, and, I and can understand they, they, why they don't want to hear that shit. But I love that you said it was. This is what needs to be cleared up too. It was illegal. It, it was, was illegal. illegal. Listen, blackface. The one guy that changed that. Before Dick Gregory was a guy named Timmy Rogers. He's on an episode of Sanford and Son. He used to do this. Oh, yeah. That's Timmy Rogers. There's an episode. I'm, Sanford and Son is my favorite sitcom. And there's a guy, Timmy Rogers, that comes in. He's Fred's friend. Fred, if you watch Sanford and Son, there's a, you're getting a black history lesson from Red Fox. All his friends, Bubba, Slappy White, they all were guys from the vaudeville days. You literally go... Holy shit. There's episodes that Richard Pryor and Paul Mooney wrote. You see it in the credits. Everybody that comes, Marla Gibbs' daughter is in an episode. It's like, it's a black history lesson. All the songs that Red Fox is singing with his, with Scatman Crothers, they're real jazz songs. I look them up. I go, oh, this shit's from 1925. He's singing them on the show. Even when Fred Red Fox is cooking, he's like, my girl. I looked that song up. I go, that's this, oh, who's artist? That's an artist. You remember the guy, my name is Lenny. Yeah. Got, that's Sugar Dap Willie. He's a stand-up comic. I looked this shit up. He's a stand-up comedian. Luanda Page was his best friend in St. Louis. When, when you know, when Red Fox Why said- Why don't you think you're as big as you should be? I don't know. Maybe- uh, I think maybe because uh, I and I'm not you know no. me man I don't I don't I'm not in no. ass kissing nigga dude I but know I, that, I, I'm man. saying I out of respect that. this dude is one of the most underrated comics I think along with myself yeah but I know why I'm but where I, I'm at but I think I think a lot of it is and you know I wish in our business they people don't pull you aside in our business they let you fuck up so that you cannot get shit because somebody will be like you can you know how you know you're young. You're brash. Yeah. You talk about, oh, yeah. I mean, as a New York comic, you know what we do? Me, Patrice O'Neal, Bill Burr, we all shit on each other all day, every day. We'd be like, we'd be like, yo, what the fuck are you wearing? We would just fuck with each other. I get to LA and I do that to these cats. All of a sudden, they go, oh, They're you crying. remember that? I had you in my sitcom for the mailman. We went a different direction because I talked about his shoes last night. They, you know, there's a lot of sensitivity, you know? And I think I could have done a lot of, uh, listen, I think I'm a talented guy. I thought if you get talented, you get things. Sometimes you might have do, you might, your behavior might have pissed people off. The way you handle yourself off stage might have pissed people off. You could have been like, man, every time he's there, he's talking to every woman on the planet. He's saying this, that could have been, you could have been, you could have offended somebody's girlfriend or wife or something. You could have done all kinds. I think it's a combination of shit. Maybe I did some shit in my youth. Where they were like, yo, man, I don't know if we should work with this. I don't know. I've gotten shit, but I don't know what the next, I don't know. Because in terms of talent and intelligence I could have said level, some shit that pissed, I don't know. Nobody pulls you to the side in, in to terms correct of, your behavior. In I terms don't know. of talent and intelligence, like, dude, you're up there with a Chappelle and the way certain Patrice and the way guys think yeah. and, 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 yeah. and the execution. So I, 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 that's why I asked you that question. You know, once upon a and time remind ago, me, I want to get back to that African American. Okay, once upon a time ago, uh, I was on Mad TV with Deborah. Yeah, and uh, one of our cast members yeah. made a, a I'm not even a joke because I could tell from the energy in which she said it. it wasn't a joke, but Deborah Wilson was dating Pat Kilbane, the white boy on the show. Okay, and this person who said this, I ain't gonna say her name, but she mm -hmm. goes, she says to another female cast member, so and so, it looked like I got. Uh, raped by a black man 
and I got the evidence under my fingernails to prove it. Who's that's a girl said that? Girl, girl, one of our female main cast members. Okay. Uh, and of course, me and Deborah were like offended by that. So we, our dumb asses, decide to say something to the producers and the heads, the top wigs at the show. Like so and so made this racist about, about, about black. Yeah, it's, it's a white. It's a black lady. White girl. White girl. White said girl it. says to another I'm white girl, by, "I look like I got raped by a black man, and I got the evidence under my fingernails to prove it." Wow. So me and Deborah kind of, you know, said something. Mm-hmm. Troublemakers. We got in trouble Shit. for saying something because we were deemed troublemakers. Oh, but the yeah. person that said it, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. So I'm I'm saying that to say what you just said. If somebody had to pull me aside and said, "Don't do that." Yes. Because you're not going to benefit from it. Right. As a matter of fact, it may backfire on you. It, it happened to John Amos in, in Good Times. Right. He he yeah, he, he had, didn't like what JJ was this buffoonery, buffoonery going on. And he went to Norm and the producers who said, hey, man, I just don't really like what it's like revering from what this purpose of this show is. Right. It's getting buffooned. And next minute they said, hey, you're not going to be in the next season. Yeah. It literally happened. Norm, they fucking fired him because he just spoke up. <laughs> For black dignity. Yeah. Like you're interrupting your buffoonery. You're interrupting what we see you as. You're interrupting How dynamite. Dare you. Well, and yes. you know what the producers were. Yeah, I do. Okay. But <laughs> no, no one at that time wrote more for black people to then, get on the then, air than Norman Lear. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, is that the gift? Mm-hmm, that, is that mm-hmm, the gift? Mm-hmm, that, it's the gift that gives mm-hmm, and the gift that takes away. We're going to give you niggas something. Slightly. It's just a matter of circumstance. It's just a matter of circumstance. And those guys were also Jewish. This is a matter of circumstance. <laughs> Mo Howard, Curly Howard, Shemp Howard were all brothers. Larry Fine was a friend. Joe Best was a friend. <laughs> Boom. That's that's real shit. And there were three Stooges guys before those guys. There were guys they had at first, but they didn't like them. And then they came and in. And then the it was Howard really brothers. four Stooges for a while. But then, yeah, they, then the Howard just, brothers just, came in and mm-hmm. they were like, nah. It was first Curly. He died. Then Shemp took over. Shemp and Mo looked the most alike, but they were all three brothers. Bong. So anyway. Um, see, back we, to, they, see, this is this is what people don't get. We actually know shit. Right. We know shit. Comedians know shit. Maybe my pro blackness makes people mad. I don't know, but dude, I, I've watched I you so many times I on do stage. All, I do various things. I do yeah, all, you're not one. It's not I a don't one. Know note. why? I mean, there's. I think there's an intimidation. But your pro blackness to me comes off more in interviews than your stage. Yeah, performance. my sta- my, my thing is my friends. What's really funny is they go, "God, for your racist." My producer is uh, white. Say, your white friends say that? My, no, no. In in the comments, oh. I, it could be trolls. Right. But I go, my my producer's white. The the guy that runs the place is a, a well white guy and a half Puerto Rican dude. It's so diverse. And they go, your race. I go, first of all, we don't have the power to be racist. You can say maybe bigoted, but I'm not even bigoted because I don't even use racial slurs. I just don't use them. I don't call people by their, I don't use racial slurs. I just don't do it. It's, it's just not in me. I'm not that fucked up. I just don't call. I don't call Asian people's chinks. I don't call. I just don't do that because it's. I don't see them as that. I can say that. Oh man, Asian people. They do this. They do that. But I don't use that. But I know Asian people that are quick to call us niggers, though. I know Spanish people quick to call us niggers when they got nothing but black blood in them. You know. But it's just funny. But I don't use that to dehumanize people. I'm not really that type of guy. But you, but your education and your honesty, I think. I don't think I'm not I'm not contributing to this. I said, no, but no. that I think if you had one thing that people say, it's your honesty, and people can't handle honesty. I, I you know I don't know what else to do. Louis C.K. can be honest, you know. Bill Burr's honest. What do they have in common? They're white guys. No. Oh, what, what, Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Louis C.K. is he white guy? He's half Mexican. He claims but white he to look, death, but he don't look it. And he don't no. claim. He and even said that on Opie and Anthony. He don't I, claim that shit. I, I, I'm I'm happy he, to say I'm can, Mexican. He, I just don't. It's always cool to say you're half something when you don't look it. Well, I don't look Cause it because I can be like, you know, because when you you can pass, I'd be like, you know, I'm half da da da, but you don't look it, so we're not bothered by it because visually we don't see it. Right. That's why they love ambiguous looking Negroes. They love that. They, we don't have to really see the blackness. Ah, oh, it's some sick shit, but they don't. Oh, good. We, you know, like the rock, the rock is not white at all. He's black and Samoan period. Yeah. His pops was one of the first major 
wrestling champions, black wrestling you from like the Soul Patrol. Strong Manchichi. And from where? From guess where? Nova Scotia. Rock's dad is from Nova Scotia, Rock Johnson. First black hockey player, Boston Bruins. Willie O'Ree came from where? Nova Scotia. Where they what? This, uh, created hockey by African Canadians. 1895. Now, I'm just saying. I see. I love, I love, I love the, how much you get I, out. And I just try to read it and I try to incorporate it in the, in the comedy. Like, I'm a big George Carlin fan. I'm a big fan of Carlin and Pryor, like, because they had knowledge from street. Carlin, Pryor's street knowledge was intelligent as fuck. I definitely got to ask you something about Carlin. Pryor, and Carlin was like, I loved his intelligence. I, okay, but let me, let me I, see, because me and Andy talked about this when we watched the HBO documentary about I Carlin. I love it. So real quick. I love it. I know Carlin is considered one of the comedic one greats. The, one of the comedic greats, yeah. But when I watch his stuff, sometimes it, I go... Was that really funny or did he just not, go on a it's not, rant? It's not about funny for me. I, I, there's stuff that I don't really laugh at. I just like that he rants. We needed a Carlin. We needed a white guy that spoke to power because black people that speak to power like, oh, he's rebellious. But Carlin's like, he goes, <laughs> blues? What the fuck are white people getting the blues for? What? Banana, Banana Republic ran out of khakis, right? Mm -hmm. The what? The espresso machine is jammed. Hootie and a blow ship are break a blow a blowfish are breaking up. White people, your job is to give people the blues, not to make them. I, he, we need right. he, we need that. But we my, I, I, everything wasn't always oh my god hilarious. I just liked his message. I liked that he was speaking to white folks. Y'all ain't shit. You know that? I right. liked it. That's what I, I liked his powerful it. message. The thing that throws me off with his comedy, and, I, and I've said this. It's, just, it's, it's a, it's a no, required taste. I felt like he was talking from above down to his audience sometimes. Because it, maybe it's just his intelligence, or yeah. maybe it was his dislike for people. I think he, he disliked society. I, I agree. I think he was disappointed with society. He was just, he hated society. I've seen him in interviews ripping dudes. His, his interviews are and fucking I like spectacular. When, when guy's like, what do you mean there's racism? What the hell you mean? You don't know that there's not racism? And he goes, white folks, we have done this, this, that. That's not true. Well, you're a delusional fuck. So his, did, I, li I like that he spoke up like mm. that. He, and he never backed away from it. No, our delusion of democracy. And he knew his privilege. Yeah. Right. I've seen a lot of Carl Andrew. He goes, I knew I was privileged. I knew that. But then he got rebellious. He was like, I didn't like what was going on. I was like, I... And the Lenny Bruce connection, just the rebellion, and him and Richard Pryor being on the same show at one time. They were both the same on the, 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 the right, um, two, with the two different sides on the same coin. They were similar in attitude. Like they were trying to be clean at first. And then they were like, man, fuck this shit. No more hippy dippy weather. No man. more hippy dippy shit. And Richard Pryor's like, I ain't trying to be like Cosby no more. Cosby, he went, he got on Ed Sullivan. Richard Pryor was on Ed Sullivan a few times. It was funny, but he was like, Man, I got to talk about the real shit, Jack. You know, right. that's why in 1971, April 29th, live and smoking, right? He was in New York at the Improv. That was the first time we saw him doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the first time I saw white people, man. You know, they would right. come to my, they would come to my mother's room, door and it say. It felt like he was, your mother was creating his get our set. It right. wasn't perfected. No, but it wasn't. That was the first time we were seeing that. Right. Even though he'd been doing comedy in the sixties, he was like, that live and smoking, that shit is fucked up. And he's, you remember when they, at the beginning, right. it shows his, right. his, his, his material. And he's like, that's the first time, you know, that's the first time I saw white people when they wanted to get their dick sucked. It's your mother in, we ain't get her dick sucked. All right, I'll see if she's in. And he's talking about that. Yes, yeah, dopamine, Jack. Hey, man. Shit. Uh, damn. And that's a white audience in that room freaking it, but, out. But it's fucking dope. No, it's great. It's, I have it. And, I have it on so DVD. I watch it. Smoking. And then how many years later, eight years later, 1979, live in, live in concert at that long, I'm, I'm in Long Beach. Well, we ain't coming to get your ass out. He was in this fucking, he murdered. Right. And my friend's dad is the one that directed that, Jeff Margolis. That's one of the best my, specials ever. My friend's dad, I went to his office and I said, I said, why does this live in concert? And his father goes, I, I, I directed that. And then I looked at it. And I said, Jeff Margolis. I'm Adam is his, my. That's my buddy. His son directed my first hour special on Comedy Central from USC Film School. He was my my main guy. Yeah. And his father directed that fucking long. It's Beach wanted concert. live in concert, right? It wanted on the on the on the cassette. Cassette it's wanted. 
Yeah. But it's live in concert where Patti LaBelle opened up for, for him. him. Yeah, that's it. Right. Yeah. And that's his wife, Jennifer. He's holding hands with and They walk into the, yeah. Man, so all of that shit, what the fuck was I saying? Um, we were talking about- um, Carlin. History. The Carlin. And just that is like, that's why I fuck with Carlin. I like his wording because he's you no know, his parents were good with words. Remember, his mom was yeah. like in advertising. I like that he's so not lazy when he writes. He's just not lazy. Even if it's not, sometimes when you're too wordy, it fucks, the funny goes away. When you're too funny, I, when you're I, too yeah, wordy. I'm wordy. I tell stories. comedy is brevity. No, but what? Don't get upset. There's a lesson that he's telling you that I've told you. Yeah, you shut up. Sometimes you get worried. He cut the fat, nigga. Yeah, the black man t coming in on the Jewish man. This is what's happening right yeah, now. Yeah, like, fuck you think he yeah, is. I'm in, yeah. love with, I'm in love with those words. Semitism. God damn it. I'm, yeah. all, I'm a hell all no. What you call that nigga? Oh, oh, well, Al, Alik <laughs> Shabazz, hell no, Jr. <laughs> yo, yo. Did you, you, did you relate to Lenny Bruce at all? Because you said you brought um, up Lenny Bruce. He was Bruce. very beatnik. Yeah. I had a, I had a double album, CD album of him doing a midnight concert. And I listen, and he, you, you got to catch his references because he was like beatnik. He's like, yeah, the yeah, rhythm of listen, his daddy, comedy. listen, daddy, oh, bong, bong, bong. And sometimes, and he was on drugs too. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, you see, listen, man, every time, you know, you're like, he was beatnik. So you got, I, I want to watch him again because his references, you're like, okay, what the fuck is he talking about? Because he would say some real, like, inside fucking hipster shit, Jack Kerouac type yeah, shit. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I couldn't really get his rhythm, but you can tell Richard Pryor was influenced by Bruce too. You know, that rebellious shit that he didn't give a fuck. He would say the word. That, and I love Lenny, um, Dustin Hoffman in Lenny. It's, it's that movie. Great. It's a great. Because he's like movie. calling everybody, you jigaboo, chink, you're this. What are you going to do now? You know, he, he approached it. He pushed the envelope. Lenny Bruce was one of those guys. First dude to really. Break he got the arrested barriers. with George Carlin. Like, that, uh, what, what was that thing we were watching? We were talking about on Vice, the comedy. What was that called? The the, the dark side. I was yeah, on that. You, yeah, oh yeah, you yeah, okay? Yeah, shit, you did so it too, was right? I. Yeah, 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 we were yeah, on yeah. it. You know, we gonna be. God it's damn. gonna be us. All right, all I was right. on it. I was too. gonna ask you. You saw all those? Saw, did you see I, I didn't see. You know, I film and I keep it moving. But right. people said they. You were really good on that. We talked about Geraldo. Right, right, Geraldo, right, right. Because I was, I was actually. They called me the day Geraldo died. They called me to say, "Hey man, where are you? We need you to." Can you take over at the stress factory? I said, why? We can't get Geraldo out of his room. And oh, I draw was a good friend of mine. I mean, I've, I've worked a lot of shows with Geraldo. I used to, I remember me and uh, Sherrod, we had to carry Geraldo out because he was on, he was so fucked up. We had to put him in a cab. Damn. We had to carry that motherfucker. Like, this is a Harvard lawyer, Harvard Law School, three, three sons. Yeah. Mm. yeah, he was brilliant as fuck too. He was the shit. But, you know, this business, man. And he was a guy that should have made it, that didn't get it. And that sometimes, can, but he was there. He was at. He was there. But sometimes you're in, and you're just in this rut. And but that like, whole group of him, Patrice, all those guys in, in and, that group. And Patrice told me, like, you know me, I'm always self sabotaging my shit. He goes, man, I'm just not trying to. I ain't trying to do what they asked me, man. Fuck all that. He goes, I don't give a fuck about 10 million followers. I'll take a hundred thousand motherfuckers that fuck with Patrice. I just want a hundred thousand that fuck with me, not 10 million that talking shit to me. He was telling me some real shit even he he called me after the fucking the roast remember that roast oh oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. when he he made the he changed the roast game it was fantastic he met and he goes man they was trying to get me to be the fat nigga to be last so i can bomb and shit man he goes and then he this is patrice at a vulnerable moment he called me he said he said what the fuck did black folks do to these mother what did we do to them why did why are they so fucked up to us what the I, fuck? You know, did I was I was do? thinking that. This is that what when Patrice you, we, we, told me. What did black people do to you, dude? I was just thinking Why that when they you was breaking so a lot much? of that shit down racially. I'm just going, what, what, what the fuck is the problem? What did we do to deserve all Jesus. this? Jesus, I, I don't know. It's like, what did we do? We just existed first, and then all of a sudden, we just became everybody's hatred fucking meal, man. Fuck, man. And then at the same time, they're copying you and taking everything from you. You're, you're like, I'm fucking confused, man. You're taking shit from us. Imitation is the best of, what is the sincerest yeah, form yeah, of for flattery. Sure. But you copy us on everything. You but, don't even take a break from copy. But this, you wait to watch us create. I think you have a, you guys watch and you record and go, well, let's wait and see what black people are going to do. And then you go, they're doing something. You can't even not Copy us on a fucking TikTok. It's the lack of appreciation. 
is what's missing. Yeah. It's it, because the lack of appreciation respect. about what? It's, it's respect lack of and appre- respect. Wait, respect. You got to have appreciation. respect first. Because they got appreciation for no, our No, skill, no, no. They, they take it with no, no appreciation. For our they humanity. take it with no appreciation, though. None. That's, None. What, I'm, that's what I'm saying about the. Right. You know, you see, mm-hmm. when you see something get copied, Yes. And, I, and I was always like influence. I, I was always mm-hmm. like, what, what is appropriation? If you, if, because like you just said, that's flattery. That that's yeah. also that. Yeah. But, but when you don't give any appreciate, when you don't allow it to exist and you try to claim it, that's where that, that you said the humanity is yeah. missing. Yeah. The, the respect, yeah. but yeah. the appreciation, you got to give it like, this is what I don't understand. And this is where like, I guess I have to agree with you uh-huh. that it's not most white people, but I mean, most white people I know do the acknowledge most, most, and know most white and appreciate. You know, you know, are thirty of them. Most white people we're talking about on the planet. <laughs> well, yeah. We're not talking about who you know. If we all, I know a lot of people, but compared to the population of the planet, come on, man, the numbers are astronomical. You go the most white people I know. Most white people you know are in few your hundred, microcosm few of a macrocosm. Okay, but on the planet. That's what I was saying, man. Well, that's why we white go, folks I can't have believe a I can't fucked up view so, of us. So let me ask you this question. And I'm not talking about every white person, so don't try to skew this. Let me say my famous... And the my, people my, that my, complain let me, let about me, this are the ones that think like let that. Let me say my, my famous genius quote, and I'm, I'm patting myself on the back. When I go, not all white people are racist, but as a, as a race, you guys are known for racism. Period. That's it. We it's know not that, all of you, <laughs> but it's a whole... I love his hand. That one that goes, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Please, no, 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 no. please, please, please give me a second. Please. What, what is this? What is this? Hold on there. <laughs> Where the black thing is. Hey, so now what, it's like, uh, it's getting like greens in a fucking peach goblin now. Eh? Oh. So when you guys, well, seriously, as as black performers, yes. black, black artists. I'm yes. Like, take, yeah. And, yeah. You, and you said you like mixed crowds. Love yes. them. Do you trust the white people in the audience? Do you like trust th- them you know, now? In, trust in them the way how. where I'm saying, they're here for me. They love me. They love my comedy. That's why they're here. My name was on the marquee. But, but they race, came to see me. A racist no, no, no. can come fuck yeah, with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But do you see, you? they still, in your head, and I'm not saying me, not no, in no, real watch, life, watch, watch, but in no. your head, they can still be written. They're, they're, of course. I always, this is how I see white folks. This is how I see white people. I always think they're all going to be racist. So I have it. So it's at 100%. They're all racist. And then it goes downward for me. If they, if I watch their actions, I go, wait a minute, maybe not, maybe, maybe not too bad. I always think they're going to be racist because let's say they call me the N word. I go, oh, well, I expected that. So, so you lower the, the bar. So I don't really want to choke the breath out of you as much because I already know you're that. <laughs> so you lower the bar for their humanity. I so lower they, their bar so for their humanity. humanity. So they can get over it I easy. I want them to earn it. And they just, all they have so to do, but I they have only to, have to go up this high. I got to watch their actions though. And it has to be consistent. I go, wait, uh, okay. Okay, let's see how he is on this. Because that's how they do. You guys do that to us. You 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 think we're all fucking dumbasses and and thugs. You, that's how you see us. So then when you see, oh wow, he graduated. Oh wow. Well, he's. Oh wow. He doesn't. After, he doesn't say I seen it. You're right. And it, <laughs> and he goes. He said ask and not axed. Wow. You know what I mean? And, you know his pants aren't sagging. He said success and not success. Now he hit the he hit the other C success. Where did, did you get that success? from? What? Wait, just now, when you said that, success. Success? I hear black people going success. And I, I get it. We, we, we just named our, we named our last podcast. Our, our last podcast was called Success. Because I was watching. Wa- listen, listen, listen. I was, I, success. We were, watching, we, we were watching the Shaq documentary on yeah. HBO. And Magic comes up and he goes, Ooh, you here know, it comes. One, one thing, <laughs> yeah, all you didn't say was Magic. One thing about Shaq, he has, Ta-da. He has success. Success. So and I, this and man I, and owns so, 7,000 businesses. Yes. And I love Magic Johnson, but the success. Success. <laughs> all he has to do, he has enough money to get a tutor to go, success. I said to Andy, Lesson Andy, over. Andy, what's this word spell? S-U-S-S-E-S-S. And he said, he said, Andy goes, success. I said, nah, success. Success. That's what black people in Bill. I just fucked it. He had a talk success. show, though. He had a talk. It does, that's what I'm a saying about America. Show. show. That's talk. the funniest part. Is- but that's America, and though. Talk. And then we can't. We we they don't. They barely give us talk shows. We can't be on talk shows. And I can read teleprompter. But that's America. And I'm not calling. Listen, and I'm not calling Magic Johnson no at all. He's definitely not. Stupid. No, he's a brilliant. He's a than me. brilliant businessman. He's man. smarter than me. And when it comes to business, I stink. But. You know, the success shit and um, when white people look at us, like if I say I know something, they'll go, well, and they'll, after the show, man, wow, you knew a lot. It wasn't coming from a compliment. You knew a lot because I was taught y'all didn't really know a lot. 
I was surprised that you knew about Harry Dude, Potter. We would do press junkets for Mad TV, mm-hmm. and we would speak mm-hmm. to to you know all the reporters mm-hmm. and in a big stage yeah. platform. Yeah. Afterwards, I had a couple of white people come up to me, and go, oh "My God, you're so articulate. You're so articulate in this." Like a lot. And here's what's funny: lots of white people have speech problems. Tom I have Brokaw, speech, I have speech problems. Tom, <laughs> Tom Brokaw had couldn't say his L's. Tom Brokaw. Remember Tom Brokaw? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, lot of, a lot of white, a lot of white folks right. fuck up their L's. Really? I really, they always have a fucking speech impediment, but no one says a word, but white privilege is so, let's make black folks, they don't know how to talk. And then we'll make, you see how they can, you see how media makes it look, and you can be anchormen with a fucking speech pattern. A speech, let us, no. But we're, but the thing is, is that black folks, from the South, from our slang comes from being sla- slavery and adjusting to the How different much languages. That CD would? It's like this. Oh, you? that's all right. Oh, let me tell you something right now. I'm a, oh, he, I, he, that's us shortening shit. That's black people shortening shit. Oh, oh, oh. That's the coolness of black folk is going, you, I, fuck that, you know, fuck all, all mom and them. Mama, you're cutting it down. They, I've seen black people go, I don't want to say mama and them. Black people know, they know there's the proper way, but they're like, mama, it's like Puerto Ricans when they speak Spanish. Hey, yo, you habla español. You habla español. Español. In, the, in, in New York, yeah. they go, yo habla español. And they can say, yo hablo español, but it's quick. Yo hablo oh, español. They, yo hablo español. Español. You speak Spanish. Or when they say the Yankees. They can the, say Yankees. Yeah, they say the Yankees. Uh, they can say, but they, it's just, it's just. <laughs> but when you, it's just. When, Consolidation of language. But also, though, when you hit that poor, the South, when you hit that language barrier, that mm-hmm. when you, what's, what's when you said the CD, how much, how much that CD would? That's also poor white people. This is a poor course, community. No, it's, of and, course and it's, it's white it, people that had it's, that language. It's designated to black folks. But it's not black okay, folks' now language. Okay, now let's talk, let's talk about the word ghetto. That is an Italian word for where they Didn't kept, know that. They kept Jews on in Venice. There was an island of ghetto where they kept Jewish people. In Venice, they kept them there in a slum. Yeah. That's where the word ghetto comes from. Well, but when you think ghetto, who do you think about? No, I think about Holocaust because they kept us in the- Hell no, Jim. That's ghetto. you because you studied. But in the general media, when they say something is ghetto, who do they think of? Okay. Black people. Well, I'm just telling you no, that no, because you, so glad visual you're doing this. is important. <laughs> you are a knowledge man. You know history, but you're rare. We're talking about rare. the general That's key masses. Word right there. The general masses are all people care about. No, but how they see a motherfucker. That is how things are skewed. That is the way television is done. It's how you see shit. When they, you know, understand? They put us on TV. It's usually ghetto shit. Black women fighting each other. Black dudes fighting each other. When there's when most of the educated people. Our African American women are murdering the game in education, but how do we know that? All we know is fucking Housewives of Atlanta, house hip hop, this and bitch, bitch, this long nails and attitude. When there's a, millions of black women that do not act like that, but we see black women act like that because of visual, and that's why you have Asian women, Latin women, and all kinds of other women acting like black women in the ghetto way, talking like them this way, because that's how they see black women. They don't see black women as a Michelle Obama or an Oprah Winfrey. They see them temporarily. But there's so many black women like that who don't scream, who don't roll their neck. They do that because of visual bullshit that they market and pump money into to shut down black image, period. <clears throat> Two things on yes. this, though. <laughs> yeah, I had hand. I love this. <laughs> he goes, thanks for the black rat. I want to just lessen the ethnic glow by wiping that away. No, no, no. But, <laughs> but, dumb but, hand. but, but what, 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 what is, what's the consistency? There is another one. <laughs> what's the consistency? I'm Italian, too. There's a little Italian. Italian. Oh, you're Italian? Yeah, okay. There's a little Italian. A little Mexican Italian and then a oh, Jew. Oh, you Mexican and Italian? Italian and Jewish. Woo! You got a okay. lot in you. Yeah, yeah, the man. This is America, man. I got a. Amer- you a, are a real. That's why oppressed. I like saying I'm American because we're, I'm a mutt. This I'm a is mixed. amazing. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, <laughs> yeah. Reading is the fundamental part of this. And, people need to read riff, more. Remember riff. Reading is fundamental. There was but a people don't moment. read anymore. No, because it, they're too lazy. There's too. We have the attention of a crack baby. People can't just sit. First, first of all, I used to do. I do this joke about how knowledge is boring. Get, I like knowledge, but there's a boredom to it. There are no beats behind it. There's no, because a lot of they times. They should have put some beats behind Hebrew to Negro. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? 
I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it. <laughs> I made him watch it. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a documentary documentary snob, and when and when documentaries aren't put together, I kind of get turned off. You gotta. I need production yeah. in my shit. Yeah. But I'm gonna watch it eventually. It, it, it's painful. It's a long watch, nigga. I heard. <laughs> It hurts. And when you say knowledge is boring, is it, is it as long as it took for Hebrews to be Negroes? Oh, dude, I'm just, yes, it's, it's probably longer. This is this is the thing, man. They they, they the, the anti semitism that they talk about it. You don't even notice it because you are so fucking what? You are just nigga, that's a it's a lot of knowledge, I, nigga. Where you're just going. The, what am I gonna do with this? See, the Mennonites came from the Chaldeans. So from the Chaldean mountains in 15 AD, that's when the brother of Mennonite and Apocyphalus. Now imagine that would be great. Now imagine that for four hours. But no, but Apocyphalus you know, came through the mountains. But they don't sign. They don't break it down that way. Then they break it down into to words, and then they go for just letters in the word. To it, they break it down all. So by the time I mean, I saw something, I thought, was that the anti? I had to rewind it. Is that the anti-Semitic? But, re- but shit remember, about? remember. It's just like movies. When you see movies that are adapted from a book, imagine a movie being filmed. They film every single page and every f- single detail. It would be six hours long. That's why they go, you know, oh, man, the book is better. Yeah, stupid, because they don't have the budget to do every page, you jackass. So they're going to do like some like, let's take this, take that, make a basic story. Go read the fucking book if you want to get details. You know what I mean? Can you imagine being that, that documentary you would be a, uh-huh. was like uh, Damon Wayans character from In Living Color, the nigga that was in jail that had all the right. remember that character because the Chaldean. But, but when you take of the machinations, <laughs> but, <laughs> dude, four hours. But see, of that here's nigga. the thing. But here's the thing about knowledge. Knowledge is boring. There's a bo- I love it because I want to gain it. That's why you only see a few and far between that really know shit because knowledge is boring. It's boring to go to a library and it's dead quiet and you got to turn pages and read words and retain. People want to be like, yo, I just want to hear some beats. I want to watch some. Right, I just, right, man, right, right, but they, right, I, I right. wish I could read when this. Uh, right, right. But I can't read with music on because it interrupts my fucking. I wish, but it doesn't work that way. You got to sit and be still. And and fuck, it's like meditation. You got to absorb it's, though. It's like it's meditation. They go, you want to follow God? You, I want to be with God. Just be still. Ah, do you meditate? Can I just have beats and God come through and listen? Right, to me? right, right. Do That's you meditate? We get, I'm trying to be better at it, but I'm I try to do it. I'm trying to be better at prayer and all kind of shit. But you have to be still. You can't be with your homeboy. Oh man, let's go pray and shit, son. No, that's dude. hilarious. Sometimes let's go pray and shit, son. <laughs> you got to do it by yourself. <laughs> People, the knowledge shit, people see a book. What it, if, if I had money, I'm, I'm, I would take it out of a bank and put it in a book. Nobody's going to rob you. Nobody's going to look in your books. You could get books. Black on- dudes ain't looking in your books. They, don't, they say, what is the best way to hide something from a black dude? Put it, put in, it in a book. You, you They'll can, never open it up. You can get books on tape, though, now. People need to educate people themselves. We have so much to audio because audio ain't. <laughs> it doesn't have any colors. Right. It's like flash. This. No. Chapter one. Yes. God. Is God present <laughs> or is God not? It's reading still. Right. Now I got to fucking hear reading. Right. I got to hear a motherfucker reading. They're that lazy. Dude. I got to hear them. I need pictures. Yeah. You ever see some people get a book and they're looking for the picture part? Like, are there pictures? Right. Right. No, there aren't. But everybody's uh, getting an opinion <laughs> without any facts behind it. That's okay. They want it like that. They, it's attention span. It's, it's no good. We know that. What you're saying to me, I know that. Right, right, but, that but that's the way it a fucking world. Right. Okay, how about this? You guys have a lot of nerve. You're talking about getting in shape. All right? You're talking about getting in shape. They're talking about wanting to get in shape. You, are you going <laughs> to go to the gym and put in that work? Yeah. Are you going to change your diet and yeah. put in that work yeah. to get where you want to get to? Yeah. Or are you going to go, I'm good. I'm just going to be a little sloppy. Call it a day. What do you, well, you, what, what, what's no, your definition no, no, of shape? No, no, no. Listen. When you want to get in shape. With the way food is and how fucked up they are purposely trying to keep people sick so they can make their money and all this other shit. Are you willing to put in that work? You go, you have, let's say you have a vision board. You go, I want to look like that motherfucker. I go, you got to put in fucking work. Even people in shape got to put in work. Are you willing to do that leg day and, you know, and be sore and, you know, do the fucking four sets and the double. Are you ready to do that? It's the same as reading. Are you ready to put in that fucking work? 
Are you ready? See, it's the, you got to approach it the same way. You're like, but people are lazy. Really? I just said, are you going to the gym? Yes. When? When I get back home. When I get back home. Dude, I, 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 you know, I but you know what I'm no, saying? No, I do know what you're saying. <clears throat> that, it, but it's the same attitude towards health. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm all right. But, but, you, but, but you said in shape. I want, I want to become healthy. Okay. Are you willing to, to, to change that diet? I'm willing be, to make small changes every day. Small till I get changes where, every till, day. To, to get to, to, to like but get you to where I want. But you got to put in that work, though. Yes, but I'm willing to make a small diet change every single day. Diet is harder than exercising. I, I'm willing to make a small 80% change every day. 80% of being in shape is the is the, is food you eat. Yeah. I, 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 I and you that. can go to the gym and bust your ass and you cannot outwork a shitty diet. All facts. I watch all the fucking bodybuilders on, on, online. I watch everybody. You cannot outwork, work out a shitty diet. Unless you are a marathon runner and you run all day and you want 26 miles to burn. But other than that, the average person doesn't do that. Are you willing to put in that mental work on that diet? Yes, that I am willing to do. Okay, but it's work, though. It is work, and it's already, it, it, the hardest part is we're handicapped because, of, and this is why I said this to you, this is why I said to you earlier, picture of you every day, and I wasn't joking because this is it. You do the same thing that we do. We're on the road all the time. All it the time. makes it, that's a handicap. It's, it stinks, but but you if you're in a city where you can get access, like Baltimore, it's a little different. There's a lot of, they fry a lot of stuff, well, you know, but if you really want to put in that work, you're in Chicago. There's plenty of places to eat healthy. Miami, plenty of places. There's places you can go and go, you know what? I'm not going to eat that. I'm going to eat that. Oh, there's a Chip Chipotle ain't the best. But if you had a choice, McDonald's or Chipotle, you know, like, ah, I feel like getting McDonald's. Look, that shit. If you really want to put in that work, you're going to find a way. It's like a crackhead. They're going to find that. You're going to find drugs if you want to. You're going to find liquor if you want to. It, it, it's rough, but yeah, I will, it's rough, I will, I will Dude, do that I work. Eat, I'm not perfect. I eat junk too. I, because I like junk. But I like junk. I'm not like, I don't eat that. No, fuck that. I like donuts. I like burgers because I like it. I'm a foodie. Yeah. But I know if I eat this shit every day, I know what the fuck I'm going to look like. Dude, there's a, there's a famous thing about Ch Chaz Promontary where mm -hmm. he's into this thing and he's sitting there and they're all talking about it. And he goes, do you eat? He goes, uh, cheese, oh, cheese, bro. Oh. He goes, do you eat them? He goes, no, never. Like, he knows what they are. He ate cheeseburgers. But he but never he, eats them he again. Won't, he won't eat them again. That's, he knows what it tastes that's, like. He loves it. Mm -hmm. But that's a memory, not That's not some, on him. And that's his life. Everybody's different. But, you know, but I he, will eat a burger because I want to because I know I don't eat it every day. Because I go, yeah, I'm going to eat this. Because I know I don't eat burgers every day, but I like a good burger. But here's the thing. You know mm -hmm. what I said? Am I willing to do it? Last night. My girl and I was a little late. We're at the club. There's not much to eat. We, we decided to get a burger. I didn't Nothing get a burger. Nothing wrong with that. I got half a burger, though. She ate half. I ate and half. And that's, that's you showing discipline because you're she, trying to reach, reach a certain goal. goal. So I am willing to do right. it. But you've got to be aware. And again, when we go back to books. A lot books, of people don't want to be aware. When you go back to books, for it. you got to be aware. you got to be. Just because but, someone tells but, you something and you hear someone else say it. How many people got, are rushing? Have you ever seen a long line at a library? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen a line? You ever seen going, yo, have you been to the public library? Dude, the shit is out the door. I can't even get in, dude. I'm trying to get that Dr. Seuss, bro. <laughs> no. <laughs> there's never a long line in a library. I got and it's free. Right, right. And there's never a long, but there's a long line at a club that they're charging you 40 for. But there's never a long line at a library. Ever. <laughs> I've been in there. No one's in there. Well, Nobody's in there. Amazon. Holy shit! There's never a long line unless they turn it into convert it into a club. Then there's a long line. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> you know, at Am night the library is a club. <laughs> <laughs> now it's busy. Right. Amazon. They should books. serve liquor in a library. That'd be fire. A, a little liquor, little wine, like they do movies. Have that. Right. People will come in the library. Amazon started with books. It's the least selling thing that they have on on Amazon it, now. It, the least sell. You can't. You <laughs> don't even have to go to the library. You got it on your <laughs> phone, and they call your phone a smartphone. <laughs> For your dumb ass. This is a smartphone because you dumb as fuck. And you can't even go, let me go on Amazon because people <laughs> have a, a, a phobia of books. There's a phobia. It, it's, it's, I would call it uh, lexophobia, maybe. Lexophobia. Because, you know, lexicography is a dictionary maker. That's a diction. Yeah, that's a diction. Yep. Lexicographer is a dictionary maker. <sighs> I don't, huh, reading? <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> And you know, let's, let's be real. School didn't really help us make reading fun. 
Our teachers were fucking, a lot of them were bitches and burnt out teachers. A lot of times, school didn't make shit fun because you had to get shit done at a certain time. You're being tested. They never really, well, they, never, they up, never built a culture for reading to be school fun. School was set up to make us employees. No doubt. You nailed it. You're damn right. To make us employees, not to learn. They, they, they have to change the, the way school is done. They have to do it because it's not, it's not working. There's a reason why I had I was abhor, I, I could, like reading. I practiced reading when I got to college. I started reading more because of the way we set it up. We go, yo, let's just start a book club. Boom, boom. Then I got into reading. I fucking went crazy because it was fun. And it was you're with your friends. You're talking about shit. You're bringing in speakers because we brought Kwame uh, Stokely Carmichael to my college. Wow. We got Kwame Ture. We got Sister Soldier came to my school. We have... um. Eleanor Nor um, Holmes Norton, who's been a senator in the White House for a long time. We brought her. We brought, um, who else did we bring? Um, it was Kwame Ture. We brought some other people, some Black Panther Party people, brought them all into our school. I saw them speak, and that got us into reading books. And yeah, it was the, we, we cultivated the love for reading. It has to be cultivated. Like with kids, you get them into reading, making it fun, and blah, blah, blah. I, but I don't like reading. Reading Rainbow did that for a lot of people. I don't it? like reading. I like knowledge. You don't like reading? I don't like reading. I, I like knowledge. I don't like reading either, but you have to to get, get it the in knowledge. your brain. Yeah. The brain, though, I wish I can go like this. Just absorb it. Just put it on your head. Yeah. Osmosis. I wish I can go, boom. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no one <sighs> But no one really <sighs> is. A, <sighs> very <sighs> few people are Thermodynamics. voracious. Thermodynamics. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> but very few <laughs> of us <laughs> are voracious Brothers readers. Brothers wouldn't even do that, probably. They'd be like, nah, man. I'm <laughs> fucking up my line. <laughs> <laughs> And there's lots of white people that are stupid as fuck. They don't read for shit. shit. And but no, I mean, there's a lot of people who are stupid as fuck, but white, they make whites to seem to be, I have this whole thing about whites not being the leaders of academics anymore at, at all. all. You know what I mean? You're not winning. It's the Nigerians, well, it's the it's the Ghanaians, it's the I had to put Ghana in there. It's the Ghanaians, it's the it's the Asians, it's the Indians. We they you getting pummeled by the immigrants. Because you had a hundred years start and you're behind. But you need pressure to make diamonds. And no we're doubt. not making diamonds because there's no pressure. It's there's easy. No pressure. It's just too easy. To I, be I really believe this is what I think. I think white supremacy has caused all this shit personally. Not giving anybody a chance, not, not inviting everybody and giving them a, free, a, a fair start. And adding our angle to we the life. We are Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. I'm talking about not just us black, but but every other race. We're the monster. Listen. You're not the monster. Pitting, pitting, pitting other races against each other, giving them privilege to make them us feel bad. I think that that is the cause of our downfall. It's the cause of our American collapse. Well, is that white male fucking supremacy. I feel that not every white male is doing that. I'm not saying that. But- all white men making our laws and all kind of fuck shit. It's the reason why we're behind in academics. Reason the reason why we're in front, we're number one in defense is because of white males and wanting to have guns and everything. And China's going to be happen. number one in defense shortly. Well, China's going to be number one in defense because they've taken the capitalistic um, attitude too and going. Oh, commun yeah. Communism as their Communist, yeah, as no their doubt. rule, but with capitalism as yeah, as, yeah. as their. That's what engine. I. Feel, that's what I feel is that, and it's there's no sense of family, no sense of inclusion. That's what's fucking everything up. That's what I think. And it's just a theory. I don't, you know, and whatever anybody wants to think, that's your fucking You business. can't disagree with that because everybody rises when you go into it together because you're going to, everybody challenges each other. Yeah. If there's no challenge and that's where yeah, we are. Not, you don't give anybody a chance. You don't give people credit. There's black engineers in science that are murdering the game. The number one uh, um, robotics engineer is a Nigerian kid. He's number one in the world. Number one. And they don't, you barely hear about them. I'm the, still trying to figure out how that African nigga on TikTok is so huge. Not saying nothing? Yeah. Hats off to him. But yeah, it's I, I like how people try to knock him off, too, and they can't do it. That's yeah. crazy. Oh, he'll kill you. He'll get you back. Ugh. He'll just go, <laughs> and you lose. Right. And he's like no, a millionaire. Yeah, And good for him. Shit. shit. Remember Charlie Chaplin? Yeah. He didn't say shit. Remember um, Richard Pryor on, a, on that on the chair when he's getting interviewed in the afternoon? Did you see it? No. A British guy is interviewing Richard and he's on coke. 
And Richard's like, he goes, so what do you think about Charlie Chaplin? Man, fuck Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> the nigga didn't say shit. <laughs> right. You didn't see it? Right, no. So let, and the British guy just died laughing. He goes, that motherfucker didn't say a goddamn thing. He didn't say shit. <laughs> right. Fuck him. Goddamn. Right. He didn't say shit. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You didn't see that? No. Dude, I watch. Dude, let me tell you something about YouTube. It is a visual library. Of everything that's you ever been recorded. anything on YouTube. I get I get Red Fox interviews. There's this one white woman that interviews Red Fox over the years. It's the same white lady. She interviews a lot of people. And she interviews Red and Damon Wilson. And when you listen to Red Fox, he's so articulate. He's not, you know, he's like, Lamont, listen, Lamont. I'm sorry, Lamont. No, he's like this. Well, it's very, I'm very happy to be here. You know, we write the scripts. We write... Very articulate. Yeah. His name is John Sanford. That's his real name. He used Fred. His brother's name was Fred Sanford. That was, that's, Red Fox's real name is John Sanford from St. Louis. And his brother was Fred. So he used his brother's name. John said, Red Fox was, his hair was red and Jimmy Fox was a baseball player. Right. So Red Fox. So yeah, he's very articulate. You learn all this. You go, oh my God, I didn't know that. That YouTube is the library, but visual. It's unreal. Well, he doesn't sound like Red Red Fox doesn't sound like his character when he's doing even his party albums. No, no. He's very, even back when he was younger, he talked like this. It's very, very, you know, very right. articulate. Very, you know. Yeah. He was very, because he comes from that era of class, you yeah. know, of class and, be, you know, knowing how to tap dance and knowing how to sing and knowing how to, everybody wore suits and he came for that. You know, Luanda Page was a, was a dancer. She was a circus yeah, I knew performer. That. Yeah. You know, you remember like, watch it, sucker. She was a circus <laughs> performer. She was, she, cause there's a, there's an episode where she, remember he had a circus in the back, in the backyard. He was like, welcome to the circus, everybody. Welcome to the circus, Red Sanford. And, and here comes Luanda Page eating fire, doing the, just as graceful as possible. Like you're like, you watch all this historical shit. I'm telling you, Sanford and Son is a history lesson. When you fucking listen and you watch, Damon Wilson, who played Lamont, was a trained tap dancer and ballet dancer. You watch him tap dance and you go, holy shit, he's really tapping. Like, they were all talented people. It's amazing shit. You know? It's amazing shit. Well, brother. But, oh, and I was saying real quick. Yes. About the African-American um, history of African-American, that book. La- um, on the real side, laughing, lying, and I signifying. I want to get that. I'm going to get that. I'm going to make sure I write that down. Of, of, right, of history of, Af- of African-American humor from slavery to Richard Pryor. Um, that Jimmy, Timmy Rogers was the guy who stopped wearing blackface. He stopped wearing it. And he said, I'm not wearing no blackface. He goes, you motherfuckers are wearing blackface and you're on radio acting and wearing blackface. I'm not doing that shit. He said, well, I'm not wearing no more corks. So when he started not doing it, it started to change. You know, and it was, you know, and then it became legal for black people to, you could actually go on stage and talk to a white audience. Did so, you ever watch Amos and Andy? The the white, the white dudes? I didn't know. I didn't know that. There was uh, first the black, right, right. a black crew. No, no, first the white dudes. White, and then the black dudes Then the did black it. dudes Yeah. Did the white dudes were radio, right? Yeah. The then, then they did a visual. Dudes, and then there was the black right. dudes. Yeah. But they, I got to say, the one white dude kind of sounded black. No, the, the big one. Not the, the, the one that the, the deep played voice the skinny one. The deep, one. No, oh, the, I, the skinny one. He's like, we are Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, yeah, they yeah. had a grass voice. And, and that shit was, this is all real shit. And guess what? I read this book on radio comedy years ago. It was on the George Burns, the Bickersons, Gracie and Allen, Fred Cantor. I mean, Eddie Cantor. I read on all of Al Jolson. There were Jewish comics wearing blackface. Al Jolson's wearing blackface. You know Al Jolson? Yeah. Wearing blackface, mammy, and doing that famous yeah, but that's, song. Yeah. There were Jewish cats wearing bl- Eddie. They were wearing blackface. Like I know they go anti-Semitism, but I'm like, hello. You know, I got to bring something up that that you. But but, because you, you wait, mentioned but historical context. You don't give anything to the history and the moment when it was said that that was what was supposed. Yeah, to Yeah, that was supposed to be done. Yeah, yeah but we got to call a spade a spade. You got to go, yo. You know, I mean, I I understand. The oppression of, uh, first of all, I empathize for oppression of many people. And we are always feeling for everybody's oppression. But when it comes to us, everybody say, wow, well, shut up. I'm like, but you talk about your oppression every fucking week. But as soon as we talk about ours, we're, we're talking too much. It's not fair. We're all, all we're asking for is recognize our shit. 
give us what the fuck we're the appreciation owed. for and when what? I say we are, I'm talking about especially African Americans or dis- who are descendants of of slaves and Africans who've been colonized and whatever because Nigeria was colonized by the English. Give us our fucking due. You do not see the humanity in us enough. We're not these dancing machines. And all you see us is these cash cow, these 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 animals that just do things and create. That's what you do. And then you put us in our cage when it's not, when it's, you know, when performance is over, you put us in our cage and put a blanket over us like parakeets so we can go to sleep. Two things. Enough. Uh, I'm speaking of a- I want to walk into a cafe. Don't double take me when I walk into to get a croissant. Why are you double taking? Why are you doing this? That's the new racism there. Um. <laughs> this shit. Like, yeah, I'm, I, you know, I like croissants. Go sit down. The fuck are you, the fuck are you looking at me for? Uh, Richard Pryor did an interview. Mm-hmm. I remember the guy asked him, can a white person write for you? And he goes, yeah, if they can write for the hum- human in me. Mm. Mm. I, that that almost brought me to tears, man. Oh. It, it, it's, it's, it's like, you know, Damn. for the white guy to go, because you black, can a white person write? Yeah, yeah. but write for the human in you me. See, you see, he, see and he, a human. And they were, he was coming from an inhumane point. Standpoint, yes. Because he didn't see you as a human being. Toni Morrison. You know Toni Morrison? Her name sounds familiar. Toni Morrison wrote Sula, The Bluest Eye. She wrote Beloved that um, Oprah Winfrey produced. You don't know Toni Morrison, one of the greatest writers in our fucking I life? Know, I know now. Toni Morrison, you got to see her documentary. You got to see this, this documentary, um, this interview where this white woman is talking about Toni Morrison's books. And all her books are about black lives and spirituality and fiction. And, she, and the light w- woman says, so a lot of your writings are, you know, your characters are all the black centered. It's centered in black characters. And she goes, what you just asked me was so powerfully racist. That's the, co- oh, I did see this. You saw this. Yes, 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 it's so it. powerful. And you know, she talked like this. It's so powerfully racist. So, and she goes, you, you want to saying that if I where why should I, why shouldn't I put white characters in my stories? All of your writers do not include us in your stories. That was so powerfully racist. You always want to be the center so that that you think that that makes a good story. When I tell you she tore this bitch down, but smooth. She goes, when a Russian writer writes about Russia, he keeps all his characters Russian because he's from Russia. But me as a... You got to see that. You got to... Let me tell you. It's the coldest sunning of somebody... But in such a graceful way, because it was racist, she didn't see the humanity in us. She thinks that a story has to be human has humanity when a white person, the white savior. That's why they do a lot of white savior right. movies because they want to lessen how fucked up and evil some whites can be. But they go, but look at the white, the, the good white dude. Look what he did after all that hatred. A white dude saves the day. Almost in Black Panther, they did that shit with the white dude saved the day in the spaceship. Really. We got all this technology and all these dope black people, but the goofy white dude. Da, 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 what button do I press? You save Wakanda. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> the Black Panther, who's this cold ass, majestic, all the powers. To, he got these warrior women whooping ass. White boy, press the button. <laughs> Hurry! <laughs> he said, doom, doom. Wakanda. After all of that cold shit, let me go. Uh, white dude presses up. Get the let, fuck let, let out me, of let here. Let me go back to to the black voice. His black powers face. had been stripped away. away. Let me go back to the to the thing for a second, because this was something that bothered me. Now, I, I love 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 Bill Burr. I think he's oh, one of the greatest. He's one of the greatest. He's ever. one of my favorites. Yeah, but I remember he, on his HBO half hour, he did the joke about uh, a black pope. And he was going like, you know, because, you know, Black Pope, he hold his gun to the side. He shoot like this and Black Pope do this, et cetera, right. et cetera, et cetera. And I remember I also saw him in an interview where he was going, it was so hacky for Black comics to do the white guy voice. He's like, oh, white guy talk like this. Mm-hmm. And I got mad at I that. I thought that was Jay, um, Jay Moore that did that, that joke. No, I, I, okay. I saw Bill Burr do it. But I okay. know he's not the only but white comic it, I get it. to say yeah, that. Of course. And what bothers me about that is as I go, but you thought it was cool when... White people would wear blackface and have niggas talk black niggas talk niggas do. Right. So I'm going, you know, again, you want to point out how hacky that was, but we had to endure that. Yeah, but okay, you just did how hacky Bill Burr is talking about today, 
And you went to history and said, but that's. But why but, not? Because why who, who, who said that white guys today are going, that's OK. No white guy is going to point at. Well, whether, you say, but whether you say no, a white guy's not saying that's OK or not, the fact of the matter is take your lumps, nigga. You took what thought we, we had to take what you thought. But he's was talking our about lungs. comedy today that that would be. Uh, Richard Pryor was the first person to give white am dudes I, real I, voices. I, I'm, to not me. Ask, I'm not asking you to jump on my side, but and you tell no, me, am wait, I right okay. or wrong? Yeah, let's, you, have, let's, okay. have, let's have it out. Let's okay, do it. Yeah. Oh, you white or right or wrong about what? My assessment, like that, bothering me. Okay. That, well, well, okay. I'm gonna make sure I get this right because sometimes my brain, I'm a fucking goof. Okay. Now, you said, Bill Burr said it's hacky. For black comics because, to talk like because that. Because he's, it, it, it's a funny ass joke because a lot of black comics would do this white voice. Hey, guy. That, right. And it was cor- it was kind of corny because white dudes And let me remind you, Eddie Murphy did it. Yeah, and it was but, fucking but, amazing. It was because fucking he was amazing. the first to but do it like, like that. No, it was Richard Pryor Richard was the first. Richard was the first to give it like, You fucking ain't right, buddy. But yeah. It, yeah. Yo, yo, fucking ain't right. Remember that? This? Yeah. Son of a bitch. bitch. Right. It was ridiculous. He gave him real voices. He gave him real voices because at the time, it was open for that. It was kind of open for that because a lot of black comics back in the day weren't really making fun of white dudes. Richard broke him literally down. dissected like, he's like, hey, there's some white boys that don't play that shit, Jack. Hey, cut the fucking crap. Fuck right. the fucking crap. Hold on, buddy. That was the first time we had heard like, yeah, that's just, that's how they are. So Eddie took that and did a different, hey, yeah, fucking, you know, he did his version because he copied prior and he says it. And then it, it and, and, I, and I see where Bill Burr's coming from because Bill Burr was just making a joke that black dudes do. Ah, and apparently, we try. <laughs> it's pretty fucking funny. But you know, I'll, I'll even but, take up. But then, one. but then, how does that? You, you're saying he I'm, says I'm, that, but then what? And then you compared it to what? I'm well, just blackface. Blackface. I, that, I, I, I don't, I don't understand it. Black, no, first of all, blackface is fucking horrible and disgusting. No, but it is. What does the, how is the joke, is, how is the but joke I'm, compared to? What I'm saying to? is if, if it's hacky for a black, a black guy to imitate, what do you think a white guy sound like with his voice like that? And it's like, we have to be told that's hacky, but yet we had to endure It's not white the voice, guys. it's the originality of it. Well, you think, well, the white dude doing blackface, it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't hacky, it was just demeaning. It wasn't hacky. I mean, I don't think that's a good comparison. No, but, but try. Okay, well, let me say I'm this. just trying to get something that's equivalent to what Bill Burr said. It doesn't, I don't think the black face Every time I've seen, okay, let, well, let me say that. Let me say on this the same level. Every time I've seen a white guy do a black guy's voice, mm-hmm. you know, he's not, he's not articulate. He's no, not he does t- the same, it's the same shit. It's the, oh, you should see what you should say is when black, when white dudes, you know, there's those white dudes that get accepted by black audiences. They do a lot of hacky black shit. They'll be like this, yo, you know what I'm saying? Because Bill Burr does a group, does a, a, a black voice. Remember, he goes, I can't imagine a, a kid in like um, in Nebraska lives on a farm and, and now he's listening to hip hop. He goes, you know what I'm saying? Because you know the crops and shit. So he's doing a black hacky voice too. But he's doing it as a white guy doing that voice. I, but there's white guys that do a black hacky voice, voice. on what we sound like. Yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? But, so I'm, I'm, a, but, I'm, but in that, yo, hi, but in that I'm not black, talking that's about, black hack. But I'm, but I'm, not, white talk, guys but I'm not talking about white comics who have a black persona, who act black to pander the black people. I'm talking about anytime I've seen a white guy imitate a black man. It's, it's hacky. It's, it's, you know, we, you know, yeah, but that's not the same well as blackface. That's not blackface. Well, black then maybe face. I shouldn't say blackface. It's, 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 it's a derivative of a blackface type of thing, but it's not the same thing. Because a blackface is a visual thing. We're talking about a phonetic thing. We're talking about what someone sounds like, and that's a hacky, what you're saying now. Now, that's that. That's a good comparison, because white dudes do hacky shit like that. They'll be like, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying no what all that shit. They're imitating a, f- a, a small part of black life. And they're, and you know what? In every stereotype, there is someone that sounds like that. Like, you look at what you did with the Italians. Look at how we talk about Italians. We did the hacky Italian. That's the hacky voice of Italians. Hey, get the fuck at it. That's all of us do that. Are all Italians like that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we got to leave because us you right know, there, man. You know what's really funny is Italians will be after. Have you ever done uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, gov- not governors, the other one in Bellport? Bellport. Not- oh, 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 Stress Factory in Bridgeport. No, not Stress mm-hmm. Factory in Bellport. It's the other one. The, 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 go- the, damn it. I know which one it is. Not governors. It's way out, and it's, it's a Jersey. 
It's Goomba yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's on the shore. It's on the shore. It's on, oh, it, I don't think I've it's ever called, done it. It's uh, called, not, go, um, not governors. You know, the guy. Yeah, uh, it's the guy. The, the, the little mobster dude. Yeah, I know. I know it. exactly which one you're talking fuck about. Fuck the fuck. I've never done it, but I know which one it is. Yo, everybody in there. Suits. Suits are Goomba. And it goes, hey, you were fucking hilarious. Yo, that's fucking wrong. They all talk what like that. What place is this? And they're the same guys that go, you know what I'm getting fucking tired of? They always got to fucking show Italians fucking. And, and he's talking like the stereotype. You go like this. Right, right. I'm getting fucking as tired as shit. <laughs> hey, we fucking <laughs> right. break your legs. I just wish they would show us in a better light. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Reminds me of Brett Ernst. <laughs> Brett, oh, Brett. Brett is, oh, when Brett does that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, can't they just fucking show us? Right, right. Bar. I get it, I get it. In Bellport, in Bellport or something, it's the, I forgot it. I thought name. it was Bellmore. Uncle Vinny's. Not Uncle Vinny's. Not Uncle Vinny's. Not, and Uncle Vinny's There's got a place the bullet, the Uncle bullet Vinny's. holes on it. <laughs> Uncle Vinny's has a fucking mobster with bullet holes on it. It's a, like, that's their, um, their uh, what is it, a mascot. It's Uncle Vinny's, and there's like a machine gun, and there's yeah. bullet holes on the fucking Knucklehead, window. Knuckleheads, Uncle Vinny's, let's nope. see, Comedy Sports. Bell, damn it. Stress like, Factory. I'm looking at a catch right Is it now. really small clubs? Yeah, yeah. Belmore. It's Bell. It's in Buck. I, I went to it twice. It's really Italian Goomba. Mm. And the guy that runs it, I think his name is Ray or Steve, and he has a fucking slick hair. He wears these suits. And I remember one time, this dude was heckling me, and I tore his ass up. And it was funny, but then he goes, the guy goes, he goes, hey, let me talk to you for a second. He goes, Off listen. the stage. Yeah, he goes, no. He goes, listen, anytime you see somebody getting out of order, just let me know. Just tell us and we get him out of there. He, he talks like that. He goes, he goes, he's like, because I don't want, I don't, I, I don't mind. I see you're a comedian. One thing I don't do is I don't interrupt you. I want you to be natural. I want you to handle those people. But sometimes when they're doing it too much, it kind of disturbs the audience. I don't want to, you know. You know, I got to pay my bills. That, that's how the fuck do the little ring. He goes, he's like, I, you're one of my favorite comedians. But I got to pay my bills. I don't want people complaining. You know what I mean? Next time, just let us know. We get them out of there. I just don't want people getting mad because people start complaining. This, <laughs> this motherfucker was smooth. I right. said, this motherfucker has killed a few people. Right. I said, I said you got it. You right. will never do that again. Right, right. It's like, oh, oh, I got my nigga wake up call. Got my goddamn nigga wake up call. Uh -huh. You can smell the cologne. You can and smell that the, shit. Yeah. Right. And his wife works there. And the son works there. His wife's like, how are ya? It, it's the it's Italian the mob. Right. Never, it's called Damn I, it, it's in Bellport. Are you sure it's not governors? It's not. I, I don't think it's governors. It's enough shit. But it, they're all they're all, all connected. I get you on those Jersey Shore. Linda it, Rowe and the lady who books all that shit. Yeah. But yeah, that's the comparison is when white dudes do the black voice, it's a hacky black, it's black hack. Okay, Even black whether they're white dudes that do black circuits and act black or white dudes that don't do black, when they do a black voice, it's like, shit, I'm going to tell you that. I've seen even Jessica Kirsten, who I think is one of the funniest human beings. That's my home girl. She does a black voice and I laugh. He goes, oh, honey, you better what? She does. Right. That's a hacky. See, I can't. Even when I would do the black church joke, yeah. I would say when I got to the part about the preacher, I'd say this preacher is important to me. He means something. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hack his voice up. But and there's I would a do black it. hacky preacher voice. There Who is, but I, but I didn't want to do it. I don't mm. think you heard me, because Jesus said everybody. But I didn't right. want to do it. I just didn't want to do it. Eh, it's fuck it. There's sometimes there's certain tools you go. Hey man, I need a hammer to hit this nail. There's nothing else. I didn't need it. Bang. It, did, it, did, it wasn't ah, necessary. I want to nail it. Ah, God, give me the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're not a fucking hack, every once in a while you go, and especially if it's good, you got to go there. Is the joke a hack? Yeah, but if you're doing a voice, it is what it is. It, I just think you should, I always call this ref, uh, update your racism. Update it. Update your bigotry. If I do a white voice, I do a white voice that is, I nail that shit. I can go, dude, dude, it doesn't have to be about race, bro. That's that's like a different kind of white guy. He goes like this, I have to admit, um, I see, I've seen you. And you are fantastic. There's different white right. voices. But that would, There's again, different black voices. There are black voices that sound like this. Dude, why, what the fuck is that about? That's There's black dudes that talk like that. They're black men that talk like this. I, I, I that was, ve I was very impressed by what you did. You, there's black men that, there's you got black e that sound like you that. You got an Idris Elba in you yet? Yo, when I did the wire, um, uh, what's up, mate? <laughs> oh, I'm here, and uh, the COVID's not a joke. Yeah, there you go. Next, 
I have, I have Chris, I have Walken, my Christopher Walken ain't bad. I know, you know, I've watched Jay Moore do Christopher Walken. I watched them all. And everyone's like, you know, man, when I come in, the, I saw everybody right. doing that. And then one day I watched, I was watching, oh, I was watching fucking Man on Fire, which is. Oh, man, one of the oh, best. Oh, my God. How has yeah. this man not got five Oscars? Lord have mercy. Yeah. Whoa, that, that, sh- that, that movie. Right. Is my favorite line from that movie is uh, he's going to meet God. I'm just trying to arrange the meeting. Jesus I'm just here to Christ. arrange the meeting. There's a cold scene with Christopher Walken when that motherfucker's in the hospital, right. in, the, in, the, in the waiting room right. with the lady. He goes, you know, Creasy, he's like, he's like an artist. He's like an artist. And uh, he's like an artist. He's just painting his masterpiece. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Mic drop. I yeah. That motherfucker. My skin went like this. Right. Get Christopher Walken just a little bit, just, just a couple seconds. Right. He goes, so what do you think he's going to do now? Crazy. I've known him a long time. He's like an artist, you know? And right now, what he's going to do, he's about to paint his masterpiece. And that's when he started murdering everybody. I said, yeah, yeah. That shit, that shit, freak. Like, listen, look at my skin, son. Yeah. That, that's when I said, I think I got Christopher Walken because he's from New York. So I said, let me fi- let me fi- um, fixate on his act, his New York accent. Not the, you know, when the man, I said, uh, Chris, he's an artist. You're, you're a comedian. Comedy is a very, 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 very difficult, very good for art. You have to be on stage, stage time, all the time, working, working all the time. Very difficult. Mm. Boom. Got it. I, I didn't make it exaggerate. I didn't exaggerate it. Like, you know, man. And, no, but I was like, is I ca- wanted to make, I wanted to ground him a little more. But it's easier to do the character, isn't it? Not for me. I don't like it because I don't think, I think it's too hokey for me. The way You're I did almost it. in pocket with it. Not quite there. What is that? I didn't, You're but almost I, I don't, in pocket But I don't it. really do him a lot. Right. So I don't focus, but I... I'm in the range. You're in the range, but That's you're not there yet. No, 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 not range. at all. You're in the range. I'm in the range. Right. So I said, how can I try him? I, it's been done so many times. Right. So when I watched it, I said, you know, Creasy is a man who is very, very, very talented. You know, right. it's it's there, especially when I have a, a cold. Oh, right. Lord. What's my man's name? I told Doug Benson. I, I told him this when we were <laughs> Doug, what's up, said, guys? <laughs> he was the improv, and he, he doesn't do impressions, but he goes right. like this. He goes, guys, I don't really do impression, but... Here's the one impression I kind of do. He goes, this is my impression of Christopher Walken at the airport, and he's found out his flight's been canceled. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's all he did. Why? <laughs> I think it's such a great joke. <laughs> it's fucking great. No. <laughs> Why? No. That's it. That no. was it. <laughs> Remember in um, run, the rundown? No. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I didn't see the rundown. With, with The Rock? No, the run, no, I love that movie. It's an action film. As an act, as and when you're acting, do you do you see that in the script where you could deliver a line that's so 100 percent you that you are going to kill and capture that I moment? I don't consider myself a great great actor. Me like either. That. So I don't I, have enough. I, I, I don't have enough work to show I would anything. Think, I would think great actors do. It's like yeah. I say with comedy, we know off a script or a scene, we know a what moment to do with it. where we, we know go, what to do. Yeah, sure. Oh, I, I can, I sure. Can. Oh, sure. But a great right. actor, I think, has that same muscle where they, they go. They, it's just. They but see you something. see Christopher Walken seeing that scene yeah. that you just did. You think he saw that and goes, oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 yeah. yeah. He, I, he probably worked it a lot because a- real actors work shit. I mean, I think really work shit over and over and do it different ways. Right. Like, uh, yeah, like when I see Denzel do shit, I go, oh, that's, he did that. That wasn't a script. You remember when in an Equalizer? Right. When he was looking at the guy at the table, he goes, when you see me, what do you see? When you look at my face, what do you see? And the right. guy's go, I see a boom. He goes, he did some shit where he puts the glass in the thing. Right. And said, yeah. What the fuck was that? Yeah. What the, and he goes when when he when he went into the room with the Russians and beat their ass, right. which was another cold ass scene. I sat there like this, dude. I didn't know. I was I, like I, this. I, I told Andy this uh, that moment where he's with the Russians, yeah. and he takes the skulls. The skulls. He, he got that from the Godfather. Oh, Godfather Two, when the senator is in there with Michael and wow. he's threatening Michael, he takes it. the skulls and, and moves it towards Michael Lord and the mercy. cannon. And he and and, yeah. and his. His um his um what is that um obsessive compulsive things to organize nice. shit. Right. And he's like boom boom boom. Right. And when he's fucking people up, he's still going. Right. Boom. He's like yeah. It was like and then when the dude is like oh, oh, on the floor, he goes, right. "All you had to do was give up the nine hundred dollars, and now you're on that funky floor 
about to die over nine thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. It's like right. This shit that motherfucker makes me tear up. He's so good. I just go look at this motherfucker. Her life's gonna and, go on, but yours is gonna end. I mean, all right, over time, $9, all $9. time. I'm so sick of time. Right. <laughs> yeah. What the shit he does when he in, in training day when he goes. So you like you like uh, raping? Look, is that what you want? You know, with the guns. And he, he, he yeah. Doing this. Yeah. That's he made that. He did, right. Nobody put that in the. Yeah. Script. He's cold. Man. He's like this, and then he's rubbing the guns. I go, what the fuck am I watching right, right now? Right. Right. When he remember when the, when he ran out of um, um Macy Gray's house? You pow pow. He's pow pow. And he goes, yeah, motherfucker. Come come come. Right. Kung. Right. Yeah, nigga. Pong pong. Yeah, man. Cold man. Holy shit! <laughs> oh, Tom, I, Hanks, I, 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 Tom Hanks said this shit about Philadelphia, which he didn't get nominated for because it's racist as fuck. Because white folks can't just be fair. He was fantastic in Philadelphia. He right. was a homophobic lawyer, and the arc changed where he started to appreciate Tom Hanks. He didn't. He wasn't homophobic anymore. He started to change, and but, he was so good. Wait. Go ahead. And he said, Tom Hanks said, when I did Philadelphia with Denzel, I stole shit from him. He's the greatest actor I've ever worked with. And Tom Hanks is one of the coldest motherfuckers. Yep. Yeah. And he said, Denzel, I take shit from him. <laughs> That's how cold he was. I was like. What was amazing to me mm-hmm. about it is what you said where it ends. Yes. But that's yes. easy to get to the end. He created where he started to see him as a person and the person right. and then not becoming that, a homophobe. That's, that's hard. hard. That arc is hard. Because there's waves in that arc. You have to Fuck get all of those. He's just that good. And it's like, holy shit. And he has two Oscars because of racism. If they were fair, whoo, that man would have a lot of Oscars. But I believe this is just my thought. That that white. Uh, now I'm gonna play devil's advocate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play gonna devil's that, advocate. Okay. That's I, good. I, I, Hold I, on. I, I they just can't see a black dude having more Oscars than any of white actors. Well, that's just my. But opinion. But this is the devil's advocate. Go ahead. Uh, Denzel has one more than Al Pacino. Al only has one, and Al's white. Italian. <laughs> they don't like Scorsese. Remember, they've always Scorsese and the, and, the, and the industry have always been. It's at the industry odds with Scorsese because with Scorsese, Scorsese won't the use the industry. Denzel, it's because he's black. Scorsese, he's pissed off some people. I think that's that. But us is you're just black and okay. Remember Los, Roscoe Lee Brown? Yes, we just watched fucking. Uh, what, what, what do we want? Uptown LB Saturday night. night. Uptown Saturday night. Yes, and you know, you know why Larry Fishburne is Lawrence Fishburne now, right? You know why? No. He did two trains running, or fed, he did two trains running with Roscoe Lee Brown. And they were going, Larry, Larry. And Roscoe Lee Brown was, come here, boy. He said, your name, you need to keep Lawrence. That's what your name should be. Stop this, Larry. You are Lawrence Fishburne. Changed it back to Lauren. He goes, I will never be Larry Fishburne again. Because Roscoe Lee Brown said, boy, you should be Lawrence Fishburne. What is Larry? Show some respect for yourself, boy. Bang. And Roscoe Lee Brown is a Shakespearean trained actor. I watched his interview. Watch YouTube. I watched his interview. And this is when Roscoe was in his eight. He goes, I remember when I was, uh, I, was uh, I was reading for Shakespeare. And he was playing some role. I went into audition. <clears throat> and it's all white. And it's a Negro coming in. And I remember I went in and I did my best. I did everything. And I remember they called me. The director said, you were the best. You were the best we had. But we just can't have a Negro playing it. And he goes, oh, you know what I should have done? I should have said, well, yes, sir, master. Maybe I would have gotten it. But uh, that's how fucked up it was back then. He beat out everybody. But they just couldn't see the lead as black. This is Roscoe Lee Brown, who was such a classic Actor, and you know, he did a lot of comedies. He was he was on Sanford and Son yeah, too. Right. Yeah, you know, and he said that. Dude, when they, you do his voice right now, I just got it. it, it, it I can do Roscoe Lee Brown, boy. Listen, boy. Yeah. yeah. Before we go, I can do before, I can before, do Harry Belafonte no, no, listen, too. Before, just to let you know, I had Harry. Go, okay, before we go, Harry. He was Biggie Smalls in Uptown State. Yes. yes. Before we go, uh, you gotta hit us with uh, my man, 
Oh, Who? don't do this, Aries. The, the, the fucking nigga looks like a cricket. James Baldwin. <laughs> I remember the time uh, when I was writing in Paris. And to see the white privilege really bothered me as a Negro in America. And I said, how in the world could a black man in such violent times not have peace to write? You see Hemingway, all these other white writers can write great books because they don't have the oppression in their minds and the stress. No. Oh, man. So, I, and, I, and I, Harry Belafonte, I remember meeting Dr. King. Oh, that's good. At the time, I was marching with Dr. King, and there was a lot of tension at the time. It was me, Dick Gregory, and we were there trying to discuss how we can find a way to not be violent. It was very tough. That's Coming very the- good, dude. That's fucking Give me that. That's very good, son. <laughs> that's <laughs> nice. Yo. And we just watched Uptown Saturday night. <laughs> I, I and had that's that. the older Harry. Yes, I love yeah. the older Harry, though. Yeah. That was a time I remember I was a singer. It's the I, remember they just got yeah. me. And I, I remember, remember that when I was a singer, I sang. At, there was a, at, we was on a show. I had a, sh- a talk, a show, a, mu- a variety show. And I remember where I, I held the hand of this white woman. And that is when they canceled the show because they couldn't believe that a black man should touch a white woman. Yeah. Yeah, yo. Yeah. Well, there that is. God Bang, God damn it. baby. Dude, that was ben. nice. That was nice. That was in pocket, dude. Yeah. <sighs> Woo. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> damn, I got to go to the lab. <laughs> damn. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, shit. You got something you want to promote? Dude, that was just that was that was. Mm. It was to remember because it was like I said. I remember. I remember. It's notes. It's well, what you do is you notes. watch. You watch the doc. You watch interviews. You gotta watch. You gotta put the work in. Dude. It's boring, but not to me. I love interviews. I watch old interviews. American Masters. Watch American Masters. Watch, you know, the lady from, uh, I know we're talking, but I love that this is nine hours. Um, <laughs> it's going to be part three, Godfrey. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You never knew about the watcho <laughs> man. Yeah. Because, you because, know it's, doobie, doobie, because it's mind-boggling to you. Yeah. You got me for three minutes. You know what's for my favorite, favorite podcast? Oh, yeah. It's Steinberg and Spears. Or Spears yeah. and Steinberg. Because they're the cream of the crop. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you like it when Godfrey comes on there. Because it's a dry Ooh, fest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you it never is. Nowhere. It, it never is. is. Sort of a cerebral type of overflow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, yo, how about when the Jew just gets out of the way? You didn't say that as, as, as Macho Man. We're going to move, Jew. <laughs> just gets out of the way. Just get out of the way. He's like, this is not the filter time. Yeah. <laughs> but I love hollow bread. Oh, God. So let's well, do this. Say, Wait, real quick. Yes. The lady, um, Nicole, Nichelle Nichols, who passed away, who was Yuhuru on um, Star Trek, the black woman. Um, her story, I was watching American Masters and her interview, you know, the black woman on Star Trek. Yeah. She, she literally changed television. Beautiful black woman who had a, who was in a, who was, and we were in the future. Mm-hmm. We were actually in fiction and in, in science fiction. Right. And she, she was at a party cause she was, she was really tired of the shit that was going on on the set. So she was at a party and it's so weird cause he goes, and Dr. King was there. Like Dr. King at a party, like Dr. King was there and she goes, and Dr. King goes, you know, I'm very, very proud of you being on Star Trek. We need your, you know, your image. And she goes, Dr. King, I I just want to quit. He goes, don't quit. Please don't quit. We need little black girls and black boys need to see you. Bum, bum, bum. She went back on the show because Dr. King saw her at a party and said, we need you on there to represent us. We need that. Do not mm. quit. It was a really good interview. Have you ever heard the Dr. King uh, uh, thing? Uh, I don't know if you call it a speech. It wasn't really a speech. Were you talking about black empowerment? No, if I had sneezed. He would have died. Yes. When that lady stabbed him. Yeah, you heard yeah. that? Yeah. But, they, but, they, but Dr. King was alive when he got shot. The, it's the, it's the, do- it's the that. doctor that smothered him. That. The yeah. doctor smothered him to die. And they know this for, for without a doubt, 100%. Yeah, they smothered him. And what, did they, what happened to the doctor? 
I mean, back in the sixties, nothing. Nothing. He just he got he got well, annoyed. He got it, no wasn't more. it wasn't it on the Melvin Ben People's documentary that, or something we watched where he said Jesse knew Dr. King was going to get killed because if you look at the photos, if they were told the guys who don't would wear Jesse, ties, would Jesse move out the way or no, something. No, no, I'm just kidding. no, no. The guys don't wear ties, and Jesse had on a turtleneck, and another dude had on a turtleneck. So the shooter was supposed to know anybody without a tie on. Make sure you don't shoot them. That's that's the a maybe maybe card. they were there in we in on it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean you know black people will sell you. Like, I don't know. I'm not saying this that all peoples you know, will sell out all peoples. No, no doubt. But I don't think it was James Earl Ray didn't shoot that guy. You, you don't think James so? Earl, no. Yeah. Do, uh, okay. You, you've been to you the civil what, rights you know museum. I got? You, you've been. To, that don't mean shit though. No, but you've been there, right? right? I've been to the Civil Rights Museum. I've been, well, the, the one, one in, in, I went in Memphis. In, um, not in Memphis. I was the one in um, Birmingham. Well, we went to the one in Memphis. Right. So, um, first of all, Joe Brown broke it down about the shooting of, 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 of Martin Luther King. He's on Vlad. Have you seen it? No. You know, he goes, well, you got to understand that Dr. King, Dr. King was not assassinated by, uh, by James Earl Ray. It wasn't James Earl Ray because I have guns and I know ballistics and it I can tell he was he was killed by a three man hit squad. That's what he used because the bullet did not match the gun that they said James Earl Ray used. Judge Joe Brown was the guy who oversaw the fucking James Earl Ray case. He was the judge. Judge Joe Brown, you know Judge Joe yeah, Brown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was James Earl Ray's judge. And it wasn't him that did it. That he breaks it the fuck down. Mm. It was a three man hit squad. YouTube? You found this on? You Vlad. 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 Right. Vlad had him on. Yeah, he's okay. talking about it. I don't watch Vlad that much. I need to. I mean, I don't there's much, but I watch, I'll watch him. I watch. I mean, listen, I I was on Vlad and I stopped because he said the shit about that what he said about the nation of Islam. I was like, I gotta get out of here. I gotta go. Cause they called me. Yeah. They did a conference call with me. Elijah Farrakhan, Farrakhan's granddaughter said, hey, man, we're going to talk to you. Royce to 5'9". Uh, I mean, Lord, I was like, I got to go. You can't, you know, you get mad at Nick Cannon for saying stuff about your folks and you're not even a practicing one. You don't even practice. You don't even believe in God. But then, you know, <clears throat> we say something, you say something, well, you say something about our folks and then you don't want to like say, hey, man, sorry about that. So I'm like, all right, I'm out of here. I can't. That's not cool. You know, you can't black appropriate our shit and then not respect us. See, there's no human. Don't, they don't see humanity in us. It's just money making shit. So I had to be out. I had to be out. So, and I still, and I'll still like when I see him on, I'll watch. If I see certain interviews, I'll watch them. You know. But you went off for a while. You didn't do him. Yeah, yeah. I stopped fucking with him for a minute because I just said I'm good. He said, "What have you apologizing now?" I said, "That just seemed phony." He, he could have done it right there and there, but you don't see. I'm not saying he's like that. I don't know. But you don't see the humanity in us. You just see us as rappers and comedians and people making you money. I mean, I hate that. That shit is annoying. It just you get tired of that shit. Got to see us as human beings, man. Because as soon as we say anything about any other culture, everybody comes down on our necks and we have to do an apology tour. But with us, it's like, oh, come on. Just let's go. Come on. Just dance. Just dance. <laughs> do your dance. Come on. <laughs> Do your dance. You're so fucking skilled. <laughs> See? <laughs> this is white people when we complain. Come that's, on. A new, that's a New York white lady's face like, that you're do doing your right there. Dance. After, I mean, after 10 plastic you're so surgeries. You're talented. I don't understand. Do we just... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> fucking fool. Listen, man, we got to... We gotta, uh, we got a show. No, 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 no. Yeah, we got shows tonight. But, but, but real quick, uh, we got to do, since we're going to break this up, intros and outros. Okay. To make this make sense. So we already did an intro for him. How long was this? Uh, uh, this was two three, hours. No, no, and, no. Oh, no three hours and 34 minutes. Damn! Yeah. I'm okay. go for four? Three hours. I got to let's this make down. it a four. Nice tight four, 31. son. We got to break we this got up. Uh, we're at 34. We got about 28. <laughs> man, dude, we ain't done it. This motherfucker. Hell no. Hell no. Yeah, I could do Joe Brown too. I did Dude, judge Joe yeah. Brown. And yeah, well, he was a three man hit squad. See, all these people always complaining because the manhood is being compromised. I right. believe you, nigga. 
I, you have to believe me because <laughs> a lot of these boys, they got the little balls and little dicks. They don't got bird chests. They got boys running in skirts and everything All right, like so that. So let's do this. Let's okay. do this. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah, we're um, going for four. <laughs> we're going the Joe Rogan route. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. So I'm going to I'm gonna count us in, Steve. Uh, uh, wait, as, I'm, I got to I got to do this. Okay, I'm going to end this at uh, 335, 17, Steve, because that extra stuff that uh, Godfrey just threw in, we need to add, keep that in there. Uh, and then... Now we're going to go ahead. What are we going to do? Just a, a break, a pause, a two uh, hour? No, no, two, yeah, I'm whatever. so glad However we, we split have up this time, time, time together. You'll find a good place. Steve, right, I'm going to count us in, Steve. And find a good place to break this. Up. Well, no, I'm just giving a, an outro. Yeah. And then do this intro, outro for the next one. Okay. Space we're that right Ghost! Now. Well, it looks like we're about to end. <laughs> All right, so listen. Space uh, Ghost. Counting us out to uh, the first exit of part one in three, two, one. So listen, y'all. Um, we're going to split this bad boy up. Two parts. Two parts. Parts. Instead of getting an email episode tomorrow, Thursday, you will get part two of Godfrey and we uh, tomorrow. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the first part. You want to give out some dates? Uh, I can if you want uh, real quick. Uh, we're going to be next week in Buffalo if it's not frozen. I think they had shows this week, man, which was Dude, they crazy. Really? Okay. Buffalo at Helium. Yeah, Helium. If, uh, I'm trying to pull it up. See how prepared I am? Huh? Did I say Dave? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, While well, he's looking, yeah, 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 yeah. Give him a mistake. Matter of fact, yeah, but I'm gonna be at Helium in Portland. Put it say in the mic. Go ahead. When? Right now. Right now. Oh, I'm gonna be at Helium in Portland. This is January 6th through the 8th. Helium in Portland. Portland Helium, which is fantastic. January 6th to the 8th. And you can catch me catch me also in January. Virginia Beach, Funny Bone, and also Nashville. Zanies in Nashville, Tennessee. Come and see me. <laughs> Go get him, boy. I, I like that Portland club, though. Which one? It, uh, helium. It's Portland. fantastic. Yes, it it is. Okay, so Aries and I, uh, January 5th through the 8th, we're going to be at Buffalo, uh, Helium in Buffalo. January 12th through the 15th, Helium in St. Louis. This is part of the cold tour. January 27th and the 28th, we're going to be at Toledo Funny Bone in Ohio. And February 24th to the 25th, Denver, Colorado. Oh, Cape I'm Brown. sorry. I got Columbus, Ohio also coming up. I like Columbus. Columbus. Funny Bone, Ohio. February, I think. February. But the thing is, is the people, I tell people, when are you coming to my town? Check the damn website. Same. You have one club in your town. When you come to Buffalo, motherfucker, <laughs> you got one club. Just go, oh, what's happening in Buffalo Helium, which all we have. Benny the Butcher came and saw me in Buffalo. And and speaking of Portland, if you are into the butcher home, coming, if you are into homeless looking white women with dirty feet, Portland is your city. <laughs> uh, all right, so that was that Eating was vegan donuts. There we go. That was Godfrey uh, for part one. We'll see y'all uh, tomorrow Thursday for Godfrey part two. Yo, we out. Okay. And so, we, and so now that we've got that one, yeah, uh, count us back in, yep. and we'll do an intro for part two, and then an outro. When do you show part two? Thursday, the next day. What, 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 oh, so I can bring up the same date again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Wait. Okay. Okay. So, but this is the intro. This is the intro. Okay. We're back. Okay. Well, let me count us okay, in. Count in. Uh, Steve, count us in in three, two, one, and we're back. Same place. Same place. We just left you off. We just, that's right. That's right. Uh, we back with our boy again. Godfrey yeah, yeah, in the yeah. motherfucking building. Yes, son. Part two with the conversation. Yeah. Uh, took too long. I had to come back. You know what I mean? Now I mean, son. Man, man, you're a top. It's like a double album, Wu-Tang. Let's get into it. You know what I'm saying? So, Steve, after I say let's get into it, wherever it was that you ended for part one, splice that together uh, for part two. Uh, and now counting into the outro in three, two, one. One more time, Godfrey, man. It was a pleasure, brother. Appreciate it, man. Got nothing Yo, but love for you, man. Listen, man, let, let me let me say this and be clear, because yes, I, I don't think black men say this enough. We don't. I love you, brother. <laughs> love you too, man. I, I got nothing but respect got, for you, I man. I appreciate that, man. You that, that man. dude, man. Oh, you man, that dude, cool. man. I appreciate that, man. That's and same with you, man. I always... <laughs> Aries <laughs> is such a fucking dick. <laughs> this, everywhere I would go... I would be like, hey, do you know Aries Spears? I say, yes, I do. Uh, fables, man. He'd be like this. What's wrong with him? Fables, man. I go, he sometimes he just doesn't talk to I go, first of all, he doesn't owe anybody anything. He don't know what a person's going through. But yeah. I know he's cool with me. I don't know how he is. With Somebody me. described me as the Black Larry David. <laughs> <laughs> they did. I had to come to Aries, sit in his truck and go, yo, God, God. 
I got these, I got these, I got these sketches. And I'm trying to do, I go, first of all, people don't like you, Aries. <laughs> you are stinking up fucking cities everywhere you go. It stopped though now. But you were just everywhere he went. I remember on a radio show, they tried to get me to talk about your ass. They go, they were like, hey, welcome to Dom and Bob. You know, it's a bit yeah, of yeah, Jim and yeah. Jum and Jim and Jum. <laughs> One of them shows. Right. right. He's like this. Yo, what do you think about Ari Spears, Godfrey? I go, I'm not going to talk about him on the show, Jim. You're just trying to trap black men into fighting. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. No, right. I'm like, I'm not. I said, Ari Spears is dope. Very talented. He's a fire ass comic. And thank I you know for checking that time. bitch who was on oh, your yeah. podcast, who was talking shit with you and Dante Nero came and defended oh, me. Mamie. And I told Andy what was so genius, and I wish y'all would have thought of it. But when you said, yo, you got the Simpsons eyes, or whatever you said about the, the face she had, <laughs> nigga, if you would have just kept it on her face and put in the Seinfeld music. <laughs> with her face like that. Nigga, that would have been genius. Yeah, because she was like, he don't. I was like, no, no. I said, there is a reason why we don't, you you know, you have to be very picky. See, my all my com- comedians on my show are black. Artie's, you know, Artie Fuqua. Yep. Artie's such a great host, such an amazing host. Then I have Akeem Woods. He's a gay black comic from who grew up in foster care from Florida. Very articulate. Very different. I ask for people, people being different. Some of these comics and some of black comics will get on and start biting off your shit. I go, I'm not competing with you, sir. There's no competition here. I'm on the poster. You're not. <laughs> My name's I, outside the but building. I, I win. Yeah. It says Godfrey right there. I'm giving you shine to help you out. Why the fuck are you doing shit that I'm doing after you watched me? It don't work like that. If you get inspired, you will be fired. How about that? <laughs> if you get inspired. <laughs> that's you funny. You will be fired. Yeah. And I'm like this. You're not going to beat me. You're not. Or or what you actually said in my defense was, you know, because sometimes I have a mixed audience, I don't want an all Def Jam show. No, we and, don't and, want it to be a black show. I have shows where, oh, they just happen to be black, but the perspective, I didn't feel that. I want different people on my shows. It's just a comedy show. I like differences. I'll, if I, I'll get an Indian woman. I got my boy Raj Sharma. If you're ever in Dallas, mm-hmm. call up Raj Sharma. Indian dude. Speaks different language. He's dope. That's my man. He grew up in Dallas. I like the international. I grew up on that international shit. Different motherfuckers. I like that. Just because I'm black doesn't mean I have to have you on my show. And a lot of you motherfuckers is trash. You're tra- Other than the headlining black dudes, right. a lot of you motherfuckers is cornballs to me. But I like, like, I'll get an alternative black dude to do this alt. I right. like that because we are alternative. People act like white people created alternative shit. No, you did not. Black people, we always had it have an alternative. We invented that shit. You made us have an alternative. We always had to be different. You always got to go in a straight line. So alternative shit. Parliament P-Funk was alternative music. The fuck are you talking about? They did funk, but they were talking a lot of, there was a lot of coded messages in, in Parliament P-Funk. That's why the Red Hot Chili Peppers copied them. Well, Red Hot Chili Peppers inducted Parliament into the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because they said, we give credit to Parliament because we acted like them. Fuck are you talking about? David Gruel said, I drum like the funk drummers, the black funk drummers. That's where I got my shit from. Stop it. So thank you, brother. Uh, <laughs> I go for, in. For the, yes. Thank you for the defense, man. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah, there's, I pick a lot. I, Mimi works with me. She does. Right. Mimi works with me. Vaughn works with me. I have um, Akeem, Artie. I got, man, I got a bunch of black comedians on my shit. Yeah. But I did but like. they uh, have to be different. And I just want to thank you for it too, because you did say, well, no, Andy opens up for, I know Andy, he's cool. And then right. you moved on and then you, you know, played the tape, but thank you for that too, because a lot of people don't Andy. know me. Right. And I appreciated it. I put you on the stage. I said, yo, go up in there and do some shit. Yeah, he threw me up. My boy, Reggie Cush, who's from from St. Louis, he, tell, he, call, he says there and her. He's I put him up. He's funny. He's different. He's a battle rapper. But he's a really funny guy. And his style is different. I just want to see different styles. You know, fuck if you're black. But if you're on there doing my shit, I'm like, my man. Nah, dog. We don't do that here. You are disrespectful as fuck. You're not going to be funnier than me. I'm telling you. 
And like I said, you're not going to beat me. I don't owe you local niggas nothing at uh, all. I've earned my stripes. Uh, remember, uh, y'all in the undercard. I'm the main event. That's but it. I'll tell you what was funny at your show when you gave yeah. me that spot. Yeah. You told me to do five minutes. Yeah. So I did five minutes. I turned thinking that the host was going to be do there. Seven. No, no one was. No right. one was there. There was like they thought I was going to go up and do because I yeah. had laughter, and so they thought maybe I was going to do more time. But I was like, he Godfrey said five minutes. No, <laughs> no, I say five. I just go five. I, I don't really care if someone does five I, but to ten. I don't even I, I give you ten. I don't even. I, I've worked with some really those old school guys, yeah. and when they say you know get off at twenty, you I, get, I get off it. at twenty. Yeah. So, so there's no, nothing wrong with abiding by the rules. But then I felt bad afterwards. I go, I could have done another joke. I, yeah, I don't. I don't trip. My thing is just have some discretion. You do your thing, do your thing, and then you get off. Some people will just keep going and keep going. I go. The show's running late. I go long. Like, have some fucking, that's all we ask. Have some grace. Like, oh, let me just do this. I'm out. Not you keep going. It's not a competition. Shin. I've earned my spot. Yeah. Give, out, give out your dates. Oh. Portland. You're going to be in Portland. Portland. Helium in Portland, January 6th to the 8th. And I forgot. I know I'm going to be in Virginia Beach Funny Bone in January. All right? This month, January, Virginia Beach Funny Bone. Go online. If you're in Virginia Beach, you have no excuse. And also Zanies in Nashville, Tennessee. Zanies in Nashville, Tennessee. And also, um, oh God, I said Zanies in Nashville, Tennessee. And also, oh, Funny Bone, Columbus, Ohio. Funny Bone in Columbus, Ohio. How are your numbers? Uh, podcast numbers? Yeah. Growing. Yeah, that's what's up. No, Gro you got to do this shit. It's a lot. It's yeah. a trudge. It's yeah. no Joe Rogan been in this game. People act like he just got a billion. <laughs> You've been mm. doing this shit a long ass time. We finally hit the number that we needed, but it, that number isn't as important Have anymore. Have you feel you feel the effects when you go live? Oh, oh on the road? They come, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah that's what's up. Uh, matter of fact, oh, I meant to tell you, I, I took my uh, son for his birthday to Disneyland, and these two girls came up to me, one black, one Mexican, and they was like, Aries, tell Andy he ain't pedantic. <laughs> ten dollar a lot of money oh, and i was son. like oh how old shit. your son uh my he just turned 13 nice so they knew the podcast Dude, it, it, it's really weird though because i'm not you you know i'm no one knows me i right. mean i'm an opener so i was going to the airport and there was this dude at tsa yeah and he's just standing there and then he just looks he kind of looks up for a second and he goes Sp spears <laughs> no, 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 he just, and, and, and then he just goes <laughs> You're Andy Steinberg, right? Uh, <laughs> and I went. I thought I was going to get in trouble for something. Right, right. And I go, yeah. And he goes, yeah, I listen to the podcast. Big fan. And I was like, ah, man, I was so Seriously, nervous. Yeah. There's right. people, it's working because people go, Godfrey, we trust, man. I'm watching. And, and oh, here's another thing. Get clips out there. For, work on your clips. Just little few. Dude, I got my clips. We're killing. Mm. Man, one of my clips hit four million. Really? Really? And then on Facebook's 8 million. Just clips. Like, let me, let me give you an example. All right, give out our dates. Guys, uh, Helium, January 5th through the 8th. We're going to be at Helium in Buffalo. January 12th through the 15th, we're going to be at Helium in St. Louis. And January 27th through the 28th, we're going to be at the Toledo Funny Bone in Ohio. I just did it. I'm asking you. Yeah. All Let's right. See. Clips, clips, clips. Right. Get little clips of your shit. Get little clips. Right. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Guys, push back. We're not going to, we might not make it to the helium January 5th through the 8th because we're going to be here in, with Godfrey in the room at the, at the Renaissance. <laughs> <laughs> As I was saying, back in 1785, the first microphone. Yo, we out, yo. Oh, hell no. Why? Why? Wait, 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 why? Wait, why? Spears and Steinberg. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. If you'd like to know who's responsible for this shit, it was hosted by Ari Spears and Andy Steinberg, produced by Steve Merrick and Anthony Holmes, executive producer, Big Papa, Robert Kelly, and Matt Klein Schmidt for the Laugh Button Podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.